And a good Saturday, or Saturday. Good Sunday. Uh, see, this day's already off to a great start. <laughs> let's let's re rewind a little bit. And a great Sunday afternoon, and a welcome to Thunderdome for matchup number three of a weekend triple header between the Watertown Wolves and the Delaware Thunder. I'm Gary Schofield alongside Mike Basile as we get set for what should be another entertaining day of hockey action. But honestly, uh, I have to start the broadcast with some startling news that uh, just broke here in the last 15 minutes or so. If you're just tuning in, TMZ is reporting that NBA legend Kobe Bryant and four others have died in a helicopter crash in Calabasas, California. Kobe Bryant dead at the age of 41. Uh, you know, there's, you think about throughout the annals of history, I, I think of Thurman Munson, I think of Roberto Clemente. Uh, athletes, legendary athletes who died in tragic ways and Kobe Bryant will be added to that list. Right, absolutely sad for everybody. I mean, I was a basketball fan growing up and obviously Kobe Bryant was, in my time, the, the player. It was Kobe and LeBron, they were the two. Right. Every time you had an argument in high school, who's better, Kobe or LeBron? Well, LeBron's a better scorer. Well, Kobe's a better scorer, LeBron's a better all-around player, whatever it may be, so that's just how it seemed to go uh, with the arguments. This is terrible, obviously helicopter crash is just so sad at the age of 41 to such a young man to pass away at that age. And uh, amazingly ironic that all the news last night was LeBron trying to pass Kobe Bryant on the all-time scoring list. So Kobe was kind of already on the top of people's minds. Uh, it's just, it's, it's crazy, uh, amazing tragedy. And I uh, wanted to uh, pass that along to you as we got things going here today in case you hadn't heard the news. But let's get back to the news of the day as far as hockey goes. Obviously, the Thunder of the weekend not going the way that they would like. They lose Friday night, a uh, tough game. They final on the score by Vladimir Port in the third period. And then last night, it was just a cavalcade of penalties starting about midway through the second period that uh, Watertown took advantage of with a hot power play and beat the Thunder 6-4. to four. That's exactly what happened. The power play got going. The two goals in the late in the second to make it a 4-2 to two game was the difference. It's that simple. There was a short stretch in this game that was the difference in this entire hockey game. And it'll be interesting to see how the Thunder bounce back today. You know, we always point to the fact that you're playing the third game in a row. Uh, and let's not forget, I believe, didn't Watertown play on Wednesday night as well? So this will be their fourth game in five days. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of hockey under their belts, too. We have to wonder how the stamina weighs in. But I think that may play into how Watertown has handled the goaltending situation. I know Commonville got hurt Friday night, and that kind of forced Constantino into action last night. And then we'll see the third netminder of the weekend, Mike Stiliatis, will take his spot in between the pipes for Watertown tonight. Well, Watertown's going for the trifecta of goalie wins, it looks like. They carry three goalies, and it was smart because now they have everyone to play in a three-game weekend series, which is tough on goaltenders. Three games and three nights, that's really tough, and especially when the Sunday carryover is this quick after right. the next. And that's why also uh, Delaware will go with the new netminder tonight as well. You saw him for a little bit last night in the third period, Sebastian Damasa Carlson, for those that weren't tuned in last night and haven't had a chance to see Sebastian play yet, Mike, what does he bring to the table filling in for Aaron Taylor today? He's a nice-sized goaltender. He's quick on his feet as well. He's really good at controlling rebounds as well. He usually swallows up the first shot, and that's all you see. Damasa Carlson, obviously not the outing he wanted, 40 of 47 in Carolina, but like we said, that's a very tough first matchup, but the way Watertown's been playing this weekend, it's not going to be any easier tonight. Stopped 9 of 9 in that third period last night, so he'll make his second start of the year for the Thunder today. When you look at what Delaware needs to do to try to pull out a victory here, uh, I know it seems pretty obvious, stay out of the penalty box would be key number one. That's the big key of tonight's action. Obviously, the penalties killed the Thunder yesterday. The power plays hurt them in the long run, and their power play did score, but it's been an Achilles heel a bit. We talked about it yesterday, and that's something that needs to improve if they want to start winning games in this league because power play percentage has got to go up from what it's at. I know last night you can look at, you know, the specialty teams making the big difference in the game, but I think, you know, if you're looking at this weekend from a Watertown perspective, I think you've got to feel really good with the way that your top two lines have played. Uh, they've been dominant at times with puck possession in the offensive zone, creating good scoring chances. 
I don't see how they come out and do anything differently today. No, and even the Sedanko line, that third line with Bormanis and Little has been really good. I don't think there's anything to change on that side of the ice. I think they've been very good in their defensive zone. I think they've even been better in the offensive zone. And Watertown's a team that if you give them an advantage, they're gonna, if you give them a chance, they're gonna take advantage of it. And that's what they've done all weekend long. And still the Addison company are out on the ice. Now Delaware is gonna change up uh, some lines today. We already see that evidenced in the starting lineup where you'll see Evgeny Demin matched up with Taylor Cutting and Brennan Young. And that means you're breaking up the demon kalinin connection, which has been pretty potent for the Thunder of late. Uh, do you think that's just kind of a way to try to spark a little bit of offense underneath Marker and Contrada? That definitely could be it. Also, I know sometimes, you know, you throw out a starting lineup just to see how they've mixed together. Maybe later in the game, they'll go back to Municello, back to Simonetta with that line, as we found out yesterday. It's Simonetta. So, uh, yeah, as we get going into the game, I'm sure we'll see some progression lines. We know there's 10 forwards, so there's going to be switches up and down the lineup. Usually you see Marker stay with Contrado and Anton Kalinin stay with Demon, but the rest of it could change up and down all night. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Coach Charlie Pence shuffles those lines tonight. So let's make it official. We'll go to Mikey's keys to victory for tonight. Let's start first with the Watertown Wolves. For the Watertown Wolves, you got to think you can't change much up. This Watertown Wolves team has been A-plus this weekend. They're scoring goals and they're keeping it out of their net. Obviously Friday, a pretty flawless game from them in that 3-2 win. Obviously you give up a couple goals, that's going to happen, but they got to stay out of the box as well. If this Wolves team get pucks deep and score the first goal of the game, maybe you'll have Delaware hanging their heads. So back on the other side, I look at the Thunder, it's obvious. You got to stay out of the box. You were shorthanded 10 times last night. That can't happen in a professional hockey game, obviously. So if you're short that many times, no matter who you're playing, they're going to make you pay. Three out of 10 on the man advantage last night were those Watertown Wolves. Public address announcer Tom Schultz getting set to introduce you to the Delaware Thunder today. And of course, uh, also, uh, thanks to everyone that came out last night. A great night. First responders night. The jersey auction went well after the game last night of course if you're uh, just here maybe you're watching the broadcast here at the thunderdome which is kind of cool don't forget there's a meet and greet tonight after the game you get to meet all the thunder players you get your merch signed so uh whether you got your thunder horns or your hat there's a really awesome um photograph of the team as well that you can get you get them all to sign that that's a pretty sharp deal so they'll be doing that at the end of regulation today of course back on the road next week but we'll be back at the thunderdome two weeks from now for games on Friday and Saturday night. Uh, I believe against, is that Danville that's in town for that weekend? Dan Berry. Dan Berry. We're town. going to Danville next weekend. That's right, see? I can't get my Dan's in order. So there you go. Danville on the road next week. Dan Berry back here the following weekend. Don't forget, on the road, you can still have Mikey Basile call all the action if you download the Mixler app or just go to DelawareThunder.com. It's exactly what you need to do. Download that app, or you can just listen on your computer, laptop, whatever you may have. It's available there as well, and DelawareThunder.com. Interesting, too. We'll talk about there's another game happening this afternoon. The Carolina Thunderbirds at the Mentor Icebreakers. Not sure if you heard about the craziness that went on at the end of the Carolina Mentor game last night. We'll discuss that as the day rolls along, as well as uh, Brody Duncan is now suspended for 15 games after firing a puck into the Carolina bench at the end of regulation. It was a wild scene that unfolded, which has led the Thunderbirds to actually put their head coach, Andre Nietzsche, on the active roster. He may have to suit up and play for the Thunderbirds today. That's craziness. We'll get into that as well as the afternoon continues. We appreciate you tuning in as we get set to turn things over to Tom Schultz, our public address announcer, as we get set for the national anthem here at the Center Ice Arena in Harrington, leading into the start of action between the Watertown Wolves and your Delaware Thunder.
Sarah Brand with the national anthem as we get set for action here at the Thunderdome, the center ice arena in Harrington between the Watertown Wolves and the Delaware Thunder. Your starting lineups first for the visiting Watertown Wolves. They don't change anything up front. They'll go with the same group that they've done Friday night and Saturday night. Michael Desjardins on the right wing, Jamie Lucas on the left wing, Derek Boudreau at center. They do send out a different defensive pair to start tonight, Cole, Con Cole Sanstabo at the right defense, and then Vladimir Port, Friday night's hero, starts on the left defense. In goal tonight, it's Michael Stiliadis. He started one game for Watertown, took a loss, allowing five goals in that effort on the season. He's two and two with the goals against the 3-6-9. For your Delaware Thunder, new starting front three. We'll have Taylor Cutting on the left wing, Evgeny Demon at center, Brennan Young on the right wing on defense. It's the captain, Charlie Penns, alongside Anthony Pisano, who scored his first goal of the season last night. And in goal, it's Sebastian Damasa Carlson making his second start of the season for the Thunder tonight. He brings in an 0-1 record with a 540 goals against. As we're underway at Thunderdome, opening faceoff, loose at center ice. Now moves into the Watertown zone where Brennan Young whacks away at it, gets it to Evgeny Demon, who plays it deeper, but Sanstabo has it there. And Vladimir Port will look to break out for the Wolves. Boudreaux fans on the pass, though. And Taylor cutting over skates, and Watertown will try again. Desjardins into the zone. Lucas right in front, backhand shot, went off Carlson, then the post, and then the net came off its moorings again. Damasa Carlson getting used to the uh, the net moorings here at the center ice arena. We'll see how quickly he gets it to get used to it. And usually it's the far net over here that comes off more times than not. So seeing this from Sebastian Damasa Carlson scares me a little bit because when he's on the other side of the ice, how many whistles are we going to get? We'll have to wait and see. Ryan Marker on the draw with Boudreaux. Derek wins that one, but it goes right through the skates of Sanstabo. Almost led to a break. For Simonetta, instead, Michael Desjardins will just loft it back into the Delaware zone, and Pisano will chase. Anthony Pisano, that big size, 6'5", 285, as they clear it back to center, all the way through the Watertown zone. They wave off the icing, though. Port over skates, and then Simonetta does as well. Desjardins gets it to Lucas, who now comes through center. He's marked by Kieran Devine, and then he's tripped up by DeCristofaro. No call, though. As play moves on, Ryan Marker will carry it ahead for Delaware. Looks like after Lucas got the shot blocked, he tripped on the puck. Marker into the zone, circle shot, pad stop, and then knocks it into his own net. Cal Puzos, who tried to clear it, and he beats Stiliadis. The goal will be counted to Ryan Marker, his 31st of the season. And just a minute three in, the Thunder are on top. Second straight night, they've grabbed the early lead. Well, that was easy. You don't see that happen too often. It's an own goal and they're having a laugh about it. That's good though for Watertown. You don't want to see heads hung. It's an unfortunate bounce, but that's what happened. Good things happen when you throw pucks on net, Gary. You always say it, Mikey, and it rings true here. Off the draw, McIntosh with a face-off win. To Chris Tafaro will carry it ahead. Now he fumbles the puck, but is able to get it back. Throw it off the wall. Masters tries to play it further, but Coachman holds it up at the blue line. Now it's a delayed offside. Thunder retreat. Watertown will get a free out here, but Boxel overskates the pass. Coachman, though, is able to punch it back to center. Thunder cleared the zone and will chase again. Calpuzos fires it around the boards. Boggsel fans on the attempt, but they wave off the icing here. De Cristofaro will play it for the Thunder. Behind his own net, he's pressured by Devney. Puck comes loose in front, but De Cristofaro is able to get it to Kieran Devine. Quick break here for the Thunder. If they hurry, Kieran Devine with a shot from the blue line. That's gloved down by Stiliadis, and he'll hold for the faceoff. I like to see that shot from Devine down low a bit there, so when you get the rebound opportunity. I know you get a line change here. You get Demon with Young and Kalinin. I like to see that. Brennan Young getting a shot with his second line to start the action tonight. Demon on the draw. It'll be Liam Little for Watertown. As you mentioned, this line of Bormanis, Sedenko, and Little, they've been really good for Watertown. You kind of would weigh them out as the third line for the Wolves, but you know they've all been creating scoring chances all weekend long, from the Boudreaux line to the Powell line, and now with these guys as well. Well, each line's been doing something for the Watertown Wolves, whether it's playing well in the defensive zone or scoring goals. Here we go. Shot from the point by uh, Bunford is, Dunford is knocked down and then a big hit on the far wall. Former Thunder Sedenko gets taken into the boards hard, but now the puck's loose in the Thunder zone. Boudreaux's got it. He'll spin away from Licky, play it back to Marvin Powell at the point. Powell will take a shot. Denatza Carlson makes the save. A stick goes flying into the corner and now the puck does as well. Licky plays it around. Young can't get it by Powell, but Demon does. Too far for Brennan. Natras will play it for Watertown. Marvin Powell now looks to settle things down for the Wolves. 
He'll wind it around the wall. Sidenko plays it further just out of the reach of Litke. And now Desjardins on a break. Two on one here for the Wolves. Desjardins, one timer Boudreaux and a save by Damasa Carlson. Puck loose along the wall. Nice little punch play by Litke. But Brennan Young's backhand pass is intercepted by Desjardins and the Wolves come back the other way. Looks like we'll get an icing call as Boudreaux couldn't get a stick on that. Now the faceoff will come back down in front of Stiliatis. First big chance for the Wolves and Damasa Carlson's up to the task. Remember that save, that's a tough one early in the game. Not used to only having one start, I should say, not not used to starting. I know he was a starter over in Sweden, so he knows obviously how to start games, but that's a big early save. With a one nothing lead, you gotta play with the lead well. Off the draw, Boudreaux, who's been fantastic on the faceoff dot this weekend, wins another. And now the puck comes back to him and he just kind of holds for a moment and then plays it to Vladimir Port who gets it out to center. Desjardins will bang it in from the red line. Kieran Devine looks to get to it for Delaware. Chips it to the blue line, not much further. I think Simonetta originally played that with a high sick stick, but he gets the puck back. Now walks into the Delaware zone, drops it to Marker. Marker throws one in front, was looking for the screen for Municello, but it was almost like a change up there. Still, he had made the save. Yeah, Marker was looking for Municello. I think it was more of a touch pass. Just got a little too much air under it. Cello couldn't knock it down. 16.51 to go in the first. Delaware with the early lead, 1-0 over Watertown. Powell, Devney, and Bodzel are out for Watertown. It's McIntosh along with Cutting and Contrato. So as you mentioned, the mix and matching of lines here for the Thunder already starting here in the first. Kyle Powell plays it ahead to Devney. Backhand pass, knocked down by DeCristofaro, but Marvin Powell picks it up. He'll backhand into the Delaware zone, and Boxel will chase. Goes into the corner with the captain, Charlie Pens. Pucks loose along the wall there. And DeCristofaro is able to chip it back out to center. And now Marvin Powell will look to track it down. No icing here. Powell will play it around the wall, but McIntosh intercepts. He throws one in front. It's in the skates of Powell. Cutting couldn't get a stick on it. Now Contrano plays it around behind. Taylor backhanded one into the slot blindly. And Kyle Powell was waiting for it. And Watertown comes back the other way with Joe Devney. He crisscrosses with Bogsel. Bogsel throws one in front. Devney got a stick on it, but sent it right over top of the net. Another nice setup there. Vladimir Port from the blue line. He'll take a shot. No screen, and Damasa Carlson gloves that down, and we'll wait for a faceoff. Good save by Sebastian Damasa Carlson. Makes the glove save, just drops the puck, says no biggie, as the shot came all the way out from the point. And you want to see those shots early for Damasa Carlson. He certainly seems to have a little bit of flair to him. 23-year-old from Sweden, kind of trying to make his mark here in the FHL, and I, I like that. I like a little swagger from your goaltender. Anton Kalinin, after the faceoff, carries into the Watertown zone. Brennan Young picks up the puck. Good back check there by Nikita Sidenko. Makes the, or gets the puck loose in the corner, but Kalinin gets it again away from Vladimir Port. He's gonna walk in front, but plays it around behind the net. Litke will come in from his defensive spot, but that eludes Evgeny Demin. Brennan Young will go to the corner to chase and gets there. Evgeny tries to spin away from Liam Little, still holding the puck. Now the cycle game going for this line. Kalinin loses his edge though, and the puck, and Sidenko is able to get it back to center where Licky will play. Dunford, who's had a pretty good weekend defensively for the Thunder, kind of getting acclimated to his new teammates, only his second weekend in the black and silver. And of course, as I'm praising him, he backhand passes it to no one. Luckily, no harm, no foul there as Anton Kalinin picks up the puck. Evgeny Demin will look to work into the Delaware or to the Watertown zone, and he does, but now an offside play as Brennan Young was a step too early there, killing that potential three on two rush. Oh, I'm not so sure he was. Yeah, and Anton Kalinin asked who was offside, and I think they pointed to Brennan Young. Couldn't see necessarily where his leg was. Might have been a smidge offside, like you said there, Gary, but that could have been a prime A scoring chance for Kalinin, who's been red hot. 15.05 to go in the first, one nothing Delaware. Watertown wins another faceoff. But the pass from Coachman is too far for Calpuzos, but now Marker backhands it into the corner. Simonetta comes away with it. He'll look for the wraparound and throws it from the side angle. Save made there by Stiliadis, and he covers up. But again, I noticed this on Friday night. You know, when it comes to Simonetta, he'll shoot from any angle possible and following your theory of just get it on the net and good things can happen. Yeah, Simonetta's a real big body. I like him playing with, look at this, Municello and Marker. This, uh, this evening we can hope they play together all night because I think this line can be very dangerous. Obviously, I already have a goal. Marker walks it around to the circle and now just backhand it back behind the net. It eludes Municello and now Calpuzos tries to play it further. Kieran Devine keeps it the blue line and plays it back into the Watertown corner where Coachman will go to get it. Desjardins, it's in his skates. He plays it along, back to center, but Ryan Marker picks it up. Nearly lost the puck, but handles through Lucas, and now Desjardins strips him, but Kieran Devine is on it. 
and he'll just backhand it back into the neutral zone. Coachman gets it to Boudreaux. He'll walk into the Delaware zone. Now he fumbles the puck. Back to center, Municello plays it to the red line. Boudreaux goes down. No call here. I thought we might get a trip on Kieran Devine, and we do. The referee behind the play raises the arm, so we'll get our first power play of the night as Kieran will go to the penalty box, and the Wolves, who were three for 10 on the power play last night, will go to the man advantage after the tripping call. Yeah, it's gonna be Devine who will sit for two for the trip. Did, anytime you get the stick around the leg area and a player goes down, it, it's gonna be dangerous. I, the refs are looking for it, obviously. A little false start on the faceoff there, so we'll try it again. Evgeny Dem and Anton Kalina, they've been good shorthanded. Pisano and Penn's out for the Thunder. Devney, Bogsel, Coachman, Powell, Sanstabo for Watertown. Powell's the quarterback of the power play. Sends one down low to Bogsel, who tried to hit Coachman in the slot. That's not his normal position. I'm not sure if he just wasn't looking for the puck, but it was a bit behind him. But either way, it turns into a clear for Delaware. And now we mentioned how good Kalinin and Demon are shorthanded. They just force the action, even in the offensive zone when they're down a man. But Watertown gets it back the other way. Coachman will play it in the corner here. He'll backhand it along to Boxel. Puck eludes him, nearly goes back to center, but Powell keeps it in. Plays it off the wall, Boxel now in the circle. Back to the point. Powell looks, waiting. Devney now in the circle. He's pressured a bit by Demon, and Demon's able to clear it back to center, and Kyle Powell has to retreat. Watertown will look to reset. Quick pass to Devney. Gets it back into the Delaware zone, across for Boxel on a nice feed. Now Boxel's pass is intercepted by Demon, and he's able to clear it back down. One minute to go on the power play. 13.06 to go in the first period with Delaware leading 1-0. It's gonna been a good penalty kill thus far, Gary. I know when the puck went down the other way, you were looking over there. The Massa Carlson sent the net for a ride, but the official had the time to put it right back on its moorings. But yeah, once the puck gets over that red line, Delaware being very aggressive on the penalty kill. Something usually they're more of a team that sit back and eat shots, but today they're all over the puck. You know, nice to see Simonetta now on the penalty kill. He's, he's getting more opportunities to shine. Good shot from Desjardins. Damasa Carlson, though, in good position, makes the save. And as you mentioned in the opener, when we were talking about uh, Damasa Carlson, no rebound. Right. That is the big thing I've noticed about Damasa Carlson in the contest against Carolina. Obviously, he gave up a few more goals than he'd like because he's not even ready, and they dropped the puck here. That's not good. Desjardins to Powell at the top. He'll throw one on net. Bounces off a couple of bodies. Now it's loose in front. Desjardins hits the post. Puck now in the corner. Marker. He'll pull it away from Desjardins and then clear it all the way down. 15 seconds left on the man advantage with Delaware still leading one to nothing. Well, that's on the linesman. You gotta look and make sure the goaltender's ready. He was facing the other way, drinking some water. And before you know it, the puck's dropped. Derek Lucas now walk into the zone with speed. Now he'll peel back, wait for reinforcements. Into the corner to Desjardins, looking for Boudreaux in front to Cristofaro though, broke that pass up. Now Lucas gets it back. Spins away from to Cristofaro. Simonetta picks it up now. Now he'll play it ahead to Marker. Now that the power plays up, we're back to even strength. Ryan Marker walks into the zone, holds, throws one off the post. Puck loose in the corner, he'll throw it again in front. Stiliadis makes the save, but now the puck's loose at the blue line and Pisano will keep it in. He tried to throw one on it, but Boudreaux knocked it down. Pisano again with a shot, that hits Taylor Cutting in front. And uh, after a little helter-skelter play, Calpuzos clears it all the way down and we'll get an icing. Wow, Delaware right after the penalty kill, out the other way with a couple good scoring chances. I would have liked Marker to drop that off to Pens at the point who was waiting alone there. He's got a big shot, obviously, instead of throwing it on from the off angle. Almost nine minutes in, really like the jump from the Thunder so far. I really like the jump from the Thunder, I really do. I mean, the start was really quick. They obviously got the first goal, couple early shots. And the killing of the penalty, that's something huge because obviously last night, three for 10, it's not crazy, but 30% is a good power play. Without question, puck loose along the far wall there as they continue to battle for it. Boudreaux comes away with it. He'll play it across to Vladimir Porter. Just banks one off the wall to Lucas. Lucas will try to skate through Pisano. Anthony stands him up. And Taylor Cutting will pick up the loose puck. Nice pass to Eric Masters, who not come through the neutral zone with speed. He'll work into the Watertown zone. Powell knocks the puck away, but now it's loose in the corner. Masters gets it back. He's trying to work around Natris, goes down, and now Kyle Powell loses his edge as well, and Taylor Cutting will come away with the puck. Divine at the point. Across to Penns, but that's back to the neutral zone, and Charlie's got to retreat. Watertown will make a quick change as, as Bogsel carries the puck into the zone. His cross-ice pass broken up by Taylor Cutting as they were looking for Devney on the doorstep. Taylor will just loft it back to center as Delaware goes for a change as well. 
Kyle Powell will deflect that puck out of play and will get a face off. Should be just on the other side of the Delaware Blue Line. And somehow the net's off again, completely off this time, under uh, behind Damasa Carlson. And it's something with the pegs here. It's got to be because you don't see it anywhere else. But 10:35 yeah. to go in the first period. One nothing Delaware Thunder on a Ryan Marker goal. Well, the faceoff is in the Delaware zone. Liam Little, Genny Demon. Demon wins the draw. Pucks loose along the wall though, and if Genny comes away with it, he'll play it to Divine. Kieran, a quick pass to Anton Kalinin. Now he'll backhand one through the neutral zone, but Bormanis knocks it down. He fumbles a bit. Brendan Young pressured him there. Now Christers will just walk it back behind the Watertown net and look to break it out. Natris for Marvin Powell. Plays it around Kalinin, and Sidenko gets it back to center, but it hits the linesman. Break there for the Thunder. Brendan Young with a nifty move around Liam Little, but then he fumbles the puck, still has it in the circle, fires a shot just over the glove of Stiliadis. Now to Christofaro's shot is in the skates of Natris. And now Marvin Powell will just clear it back to center. Devine knocks it down there. Kieran will just bang it into the Watertown zone. Kalina gives chase, but Marvin Powell gets there first. He'll pass ahead to Boudreaux. He'll play it to Bormanis. Christers walks in with speed. He's had a really good weekend. Bryce Litke falls down, but Brennan Young's able to get it out to center. Sanstabo, blind pass across the zone, but Bormanis is able to play it in. He'll work his way into the corner, plays it back to the point. Shot there from Port, glove saved, Amasa Carlson. And he'll hold for the faceoff. He doesn't like to hold that after the whistle. Media timeout here, 927 to go in period number one. You see a little bit of what Brennan Young can do there. In between the legs of the defenseman, over skate, still finds a way to pick up the loose puck and fire a shot just over the crossbar there. You got Stiliadis. Hasn't seen much action though, far, much of this season. So you gotta fire pucks on net. And, the biggest thing this weekend, the developing story, was Commonville because you wonder how many could he have played. At least two, obviously, right. the way he's been playing this season. You don't get to see him Saturday. You still get the win with Constantino. But now tonight you got Stiliadis, a guy who doesn't play all that much. So we'll see, can he play all 60 competitively? And how will this Watertown Wolves team play in their fourth game this week? They right. played Elmira in a midweek game on Wednesday. Exactly. It's their fourth game in five days. And... As you mentioned too, the quick turnaround. You know, the game ended last night around 9.45, and then you gotta figure about the pregame routine. These guys usually are getting themselves prepped for a game, good three, four hours before, throws off your eating habit. Like everything's different on a day like today when you get the matinee face off. And at this point, it seems that Delaware's got the fresher legs. Well, I talked to Brian Dunford before the game, and I said to him, how are the legs feeling? He said, fine. I said, all right, three games, three nights, I guess fine. Puck loose in front. Lucas gets a shot off, but again, the net came off. It just kind of bounced momentarily. I'm surprised. I guess maybe it is still off. Okay. So, Damasa Carlson, again, just trying to get acclimated to those pegs. I, You know, there was a lot of consternation from goaltenders and visiting teams early on in the year. You know, a lot of... Uh, accusations of goalies purposely knocking the net off. It's just a, a symptom of the arena here that we've seen over the last few months. Well, Gary, my question is, when does Watertown start to get frustrated? Because you know it's going to be soon. Without question. Nice pass break up there by Port. Watertown brings it back the other way. Kieran Devine's able to get back to center. Simonetta plays it there, but Boudreau gets it at the red line. Puck pops in the air. And now it's still loose. Just inside the Delaware zone, Municello plays it back to Anthony Pisano. Pisano to Municello, trying to work through the Watertown D, and he does. His shot, though, is deflected by Sanstabo. Ryan Marker wanted that pass, didn't get it, but we'll get a faceoff in the Watertown zone. Yeah, you heard Marker's stick, clap, 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 didn't get it, and the shot from Municello goes up and out of play. Let's talk about number 17, the linesman, tonight's action. That's a big boy on the blue line. <laughs> without, uh, without a doubt, I don't think anybody's going to be arguing any calls with him tonight. <laughs> no, not at I all. I can guarantee you I wouldn't be. Do you think he uh, he gives Pisano a run for his money or not that big? Pretty tall, He's eh? pretty close. <laughs> well, you know, Pisano comes in at 6'5". You throw the skates on, he's probably standing at about 6'8 or so. I would say he's pretty close. <laughs> not messing around with him. 8.46 to go off the draw. Tie up there with the linesman in the circle. Puck comes free, but Eric Masters takes it away. Walks into the high slot, and then a good back check by Boxel gets the puck to Devney, and Watertown comes the other way. Joe Devney into the zone with speed. He fires a shot that goes off the glove of Damasa Carlson. 
and then bounces over the stick of Masters. Then a shot from the point by Port is stopped, but it's just loose in the slot. And now it bounces over the stick of Calpuzos as Contrado tries to get there, but can't get or can't win the race as Calpuzo gets to it first. But then he falls down. Kyle Powell finally able to settle it down and at least get it back to center where Dunford throws it across. Dunford nearly hit that big lines, but that would have been scary for him. Kyle Powell knocks down the clearing it down from Lidke, but they're gonna say offside. That was awfully close. I thought Kyle kept that in the zone, but again, I don't think anybody's Go gonna ahead, argue. Gary. Nope. Go ahead, Gary. Not arguing that call. <laughs> no way, it looked like that puck was just on the blue line. Tough to tell when it's elevated like that, obviously, but first matinee game of the season. I know a big question here at the Thunderdome was, how's the crowd gonna be? And it did not disappoint once again here, because we got to look at Evgeny Demin there, who's probably, in my opinion, on this team, the best two-way forward the Delaware Thunder have. I would agree, uh, wins another draw. Delaware is able to play it into the Watertown zone. Stiliadis holds it up for Marvin Powell, who looked to break out. He's gonna play one off the wall to Christos Bormanis, plays on side. Good defense, though, by Dunford to hold him up. And now Brendan Young's able to at least get it back to center where Natras has to play it back in. It'll wind around behind the net. Liam Little and Dunford, will, or Lickie will come together there. But Liam Little gets the puck. Try to get it back to the point, but that's knocked down by Anton Kalinin, and the Thunder come back the other way. Anton walks into the zone, holds, fires a shot. It goes off a skate. And wide of the net, Devine pinching in at the point. He'll keep it alive for the Thunder, where Demon and Little battle in the corner. Devine gets it to Young. His shot deflected by Marvin Powell. I don't think it ever got to the goal. And Watertown's able to clear it all the way down, but it'll be an icing. So another offensive zone draw coming for the Thunder with 7.09 to go. Well, Brennan, Lump, Brennan Young looks like a good addition to this second line with Kalinin and, and Evgeny Demon. I mean, you look at them play so far. Tons of shots towards the net, a couple on net. Nothing to the back of it yet, obviously, but Young brings a good shot as well. The only thing you look at that line, you say they're a little small in stature. Ryan Marker loses the draw to Liam Little, and then Natras just plays it through center. Not enough steam for icing on this one, I don't believe, as Kieran Devine will play it. They did call it off. Play continues. We're under seven minutes to go in the first. Delaware leads 1-0. Puck in the skates of Municello, but a good backup there by Kieran Devine, and he's able to get it into the Watertown zone. Vladimir Port will play it there, and he'll just backhand it back to center. Municello plays it along to Pisano. Tried to find Simonetta through the middle of the ice. Instead, it was Vladimir Port. Good job to step around the Delaware defender, but then a good back check by Simonetta, but the puck bounces in front. Now Pisano is going after Lucas, who he feels like took an extra shot at Carlson, who had covered the puck. I think this is going to cost the Thunder two minutes as Pisano is going to get sent to the bench. Pretty sure Lucas didn't want a, any return exchange there with Pisano. And now Lucas and Penns are having a conversation. Well, it looked like Luf Lucas fell down a little easily there on the second time. I wonder if we're gonna get two the other way for the slash on the goaltender as well. Well, there's a broken stick there in the circle too, so I almost wonder, not, oh, that must be Lucas's stick because I'm pretty sure Kieran Devine wouldn't have picked it up if that wasn't Pisano's. Yeah, that's definitely Pisano's stick. He slashed the stick out of uh, Lucas's hands pretty hard. After that extra whack. That was kind of a weird play, though. Like, that puck just kind of had eyes and rolled through players into the crease. And I think it might even surprise Lucas a little bit that the puck was there to begin with. Well, the laugh I have a little bit is that the penalty was for the slash, not the extra after the whistle. I mean, okay. in my opinion, the slash is, is what it is. You're, you slash our goalie, we slash you back. I... I don't have a problem with that, but how does Delaware end up the only team down here? Well, it's not very often you'll see that extra whack at the goalie call. So the Thunder are gonna go back on the kill. Watertown 0 for 1 on the power play tonight, but their power play has been really good this weekend. As we mentioned, they scored three times last night. They only scored one power play goal Friday night, but they created a ton of chances. Aaron Taylor was really good Friday and made four or five sparkling saves on the penalty kill. And then even last night on the five on three, you know, it could have been easily a good five or six goal night on the power play for the Wolves last night. Yeah, and the frustrating part is, you know, it seems like the goalies don't get protected. Once the puck's covered, that's gotta be it as the net pops off again here. But in any level of hockey, you see it. As soon as that puck gets covered, that's supposed to be it. And it's not in a lot of the levels. I understand there's a late, but then you gotta let the other stuff go. If you're gonna let the goalie take a hack, players are gonna need to take it into their own hands, and it's that simple. So again, the net comes off. Damasa Carlson kind of throwing his hands up in the air like, I don't know what to do. Boudreaux and Demon on the draw. Watertown wins. Powell at the point. 
It's in the skates of Desjardins. Kalinin trying to get it out, and they'll battle for it along the wall. Now Boudreau and Pens come together. Charlie goes down, and now Lucas comes away with the puck. He'll work around the net, pestered by Kalinin. He'll just play it back behind for Boudreau. Boudreau and Pens go to the wall. Puck still loose behind the net as Lucas comes in to clean it up. He gets it to Boudreau, and now finally Watertown's got their power play set up. Calpuzos into the center to Boudreau. Now across to Powell at the top of the circle. Calpuzos fumbles the puck a bit. Now plays it right into the slot to Boudreau, across to Desjardins in the circle. Now we get a whistle, and a shot from the point nails Lucas in the leg. That's got a sting. And Sebastian DeMassa Carlson's actually talking to Kyle Powell saying, probably it's not my fault, this is terrible. We gotta get someone out here, I would say, and get those nets pegged down. But it looks like that time DeMassa Carlson just knocked right into it and well, it popped off. It can't happen like that, you know? And that's the thing, I mean, he's just trying to move side to side. And I know we've seen the nets come off their moorings fairly easily throughout the season, but never like this up to this point. Those dang three o'clock starts, Gary. Off the draw, Simonetta picks up the puck with speed. He'll walk into the zone, fires a shot that's deflected by Powell and goes into the netting. 103 left on the Pisano minor, 537 to go in the first with a thunder up one nothing. Well, this has been a slow moving first, obviously. Lots of whistles, you got the penalties, you got the net coming off more times than once to say the least here. But we're seeing Sebastian Day, Massa Carlson do a lot of good things in that it's one and done for the most part. If he's seeing it, he's keeping it out, he's knocking the rebounds down, and if there is a rebound, it's usually to a very not dangerous area in the corners. Joe Devney wins the draw. Kyle Powell plays it to Bogzel, but then he loses the handle, and Delaware is able to play it back into the Watertown zone. Calpuzos will bring it back. His backhand attempt for Powell got into the skates a marker, but came right back to him. And now he'll just fire it in around the wall. Bogzel lets it go to Powell. Powell walks right in front, and now plays it behind to Bogzel. And now one of the Thunder players, Dunford, went down right into Damasa Carlson, and we get a whistle as I think the net comes dislodged again. The net pops off as it was, I believe, like you said, it was Coachman indeed who knocked Damasa Carlson down via Brian Dunford as they went tumbling into each other. But Gary, I think the net was off before that again. This is maddening. So a face off to the right of Damasa Carlson. It's gotta become frustrated. As you mentioned a few minutes ago, like Watertown's gotta be getting to the point of pulling their hair out. Because how do you get any kind of offensive flow when you're stopping the play every five seconds? Right, and eventually I worry that Sebastian DeMassa Carlson's going to get a penalty. I know it's not his fault, right. but how many times can you do it without, you know, a repercussion? But you look at it the other way for DeMassa Carlson. He can't stop playing his style. Exactly. Ten seconds left on the man advantage. Lucas gets taken to the boards by Dunford, but is able to play it around to Kyle Powell. Five seconds left on the power play. Lucas into the slot for Devney and a save by DeMassa Carlson. Rebound behind the net. Kyle Powell gets it, power play time's up, we're back to even strength, but Devney's got the puck in the corner. Works around one of the defenders to Cristofaro, he's able to play it back into the corner. Lucas loses it there as he gets bodied by Dunford, and the Thunder are able to play it back to center. 4.15 to go, one nothing Delaware, back to even strength. The Wolves will get a bit of a change here as they just wind it into the Delaware zone. Delaware looks to counter, Kalinin on to Brennan Young. Drop pass to Kalinin from the circle shot. Saved by Stiliadis. I don't think he realized he had it at first, but then found it in the catching mitt and holds on for the faceoff. You heard that puck hit his stick, and then he didn't know where it went. I think he thought he deflected it up and out of play, but he deflected it right into his own glove, which is no issue for him as he covers up for the whistle. Like that play, though, between Kalinin and Young. Brennan with the drop pass, then providing the screen and a good shot from Anton. 4.04 to go. Again, first time we've seen these three guys play together this season, and so far it's looked pretty good. Off the faceoff, Boudreau with another win, but it's loose in the corner. They battle for it, Derek gets back to it. Now that puck ends up in the skates of Bogsel. His clearing attempt's knocked down by Demon. Play back on side for Delaware. Boudreau with a quick pass, goes off the skate of Kieran Devine. He'll battle for it at center. Again, Demon comes away with it. He'll walk into the Watertown zone, he'll take a shot. It was deflected by Port and off the back wall. Stiliadis will just cover up for another faceoff. Taking nothing away from Brennan Young, but have we really seen anybody not shine with Kalinin and Demon? I think the two are so crafty that they make whoever it is better, and I think Brennan Young's a really good fit with them with the shot he has. I would agree, and because I'll tell you, and, and this is not a knock on Patrick Tundall, but the first couple of weeks of watching him play, I didn't expect him to be an offensive force. He was able to capitalize on some great chances playing with Kalinin 
and Demon and made him a better offensive player. I think Brennan's got a little more skill, and now maybe he'll have an opportunity to shine. Puck loose at center as Bryce Litke plays it ahead to Kalinin. Young was nearly offside again, but not. There it is, the shot from Young goes off the blocker of Stiliotis. I think it would have been wide anyway, but a nice save. Good job getting across the goal mouth there by the Watertown netminder. How crafty is Anton Kalinin, and boy is he good. The pass on the backhand, right on the tape of Brennan Young. Unfortunately for Young, like you said, just pushed the shot a bit wide. Demons got it back again, but now he gets bodied by two Wolves, Little and Natras. Puck along the wall, and they still can't get it out. Finally, it comes to Christers Bormanis. He'll kick it ahead to the forehand and walk into the Delaware zone. Off to Sedenko, who scored a goal last night. Blocker saved by Damasa Carlson. Bormanis goes down. He's looking for a call, and Pisano's not going to get one. Sedenko, he gets taken to the wall by Pisano. Bormanis nearly came away with the puck, but Pisano plays it off the back wall. Taylor Cutting will play it along, but not out. Natras winds and fires, and another save by Damasa Carlson. And as you mentioned, the rebounds go to safe places. As Cutting plays it from the corner, but now a shot from the point from Natras got through bodies, but Damasa Carlson's able to make the save. Now Charlie Penz and Bormanis are having words. Puck's still not out of this. Okay, it did come out, and now they're going to call an offside as Watertown played it back in. We get a stop at the play with 2.23 left. Penz and Borman is still having a chat now as the official comes over to head coach Charlie Penz as well now, and they have a bit of a chat. Not sure. I know Christers was upset thinking that he got taken down by Pisano. And I think that's what Natris is saying now, asking why wasn't there a call there. I'm surprised at how many conversations are allowed to go on on non calls. Especially with players. Right. You know, uh, some of these players, if you're not wearing the C or the A, you should not be able to talk to the official. Conversation over now, nothing changes. Kyle Powell wins the faceoff. Natris will play it back into the Delaware zone. Devine will chase into the corner. He'll hold there, just play it across to his deep partner, to Cristofaro. Nice pass ahead to McIntosh. Mack on this tape of cutting, who will fire it into the corner. Contrado throws it around behind, too far for cutting. Oh, Taylor does get to the puck. He gets it to the corner. McIntosh back to the point. To Cristofaro winds and fires through a screen. Saved by Stiliadis. It was loose in the slot. McIntosh couldn't bang it home. Turning shot from Taylor Cutting. I think that hit the post and Stiliadis' stick. And now it's loose behind the net. Contrado's got it. To De Cristofaro. He throws one behind. Looks like Boggsel will get to it. Can't get it out though as Kieran Devine keeps it in. Contrado turns and fires. That shot's deflected by Cutting and goes behind the net. But comes back to Contrado in the corner. Brandon will play back to Devine at the point. Kieran with a shot through traffic. Rebound shot. Save the Ciliatis on Contrado. And he'll hold for the faceoff. A flurry of chances for the Thunder. And Taylor Cutting gives Ciliatis a hug at the end of the play. I thought the big save was the one on Taylor Cutting. But the even bigger one was the glove flash on Brandon Contrado. That's absolutely huge. And he does give him a hug. That's a great shift from that line. An absolutely phenomenal shift. And again, a new pairing with Contrado. Uh, McIntosh and Cutting playing together. Off the draw, Dunford fires one from the blue line well wide. It'll come to Lucas. He plays it ahead to Desjardins. Desjardins will backhand into the Delaware zone. Damasa Carlson will play it off the wall. Gets past Boudreaux and on the stick of Marker. Marker to Municello. Two on two here. Thomas winds a shot. Deflected by Calpuzos and a save by Stiliadis, but Municello throws it back in front. Was hoping for Simonetta, but couldn't get him there. Although, Simonetta's got the puck, tried to play it behind the net, but Boudreaux's there, steals the pass and plays it back to center, a bit too far for Desjardins. Licky to Municello, Thomas from the slot, shot, saves Stiliadis, but it's loose in front, rebound, shot from Marker is stopped as well. We're under a minute to play now, puck's still loose in the slot. Finally, Derek Lucas is able to skate it away for Watertown. Into the Delaware zone, drop pass to Boudreaux, gets around Licky on the backhand, not much steam on that. And as it comes loose into the corner, Delaware is going to be able to clear as Simonetta plays it off the glass. Simonetta with a good clearing effort there. He was looking for Ryan Marker as well. Another good save by Damasa Carlson at the other end. 24 seconds left in the first period. Bogsel plays it down low to Devney. Devney throws it into the slot, but Kalinin's waiting there. He'll clear it back to center. 15 seconds to go. Vladimir Port now. He'll walk across the blue line. Looking to set up one last chance. Throws it into the slot. It bounces over the stick of Devney. Loose in the corner, it eludes Boudreaux, and Kalinin is able to play it ahead to Ryan Marker. Marker's just gonna hold the puck as we'll get the triple zeros on the clock, and after 20 minutes of play, the Thunder won, the Wolves nothing. As you said, it was kind of a, a clunky period. A lot of stops and starts, especially all those whistles, 
with the net coming off, and now Pisano having words with Joe Devney. Not, and he's, <laughs> Pisano basically asking, saying to step up. Devney with a retort of, you're playing like a Neanderthal. So, it's been the third day these two teams have gone at it. There's been some pleasantries exchanged, and of course I say that with some sarcasm, since Friday night, but we've only seen one actual fight this weekend. Pisano asked a few times last night for guys to go. It didn't happen. We kind of wondered if anybody would answer that call. We're still waiting for the teams to clear the ice here. It's Marvin Powell still, as Devney continues to speak back and forth with the officials here. Finally, Watertown will get off the ice. But again, after 20 minutes, the only goal of the game actually came off the stick of Nicholas Calpuzos. Problem is, he put it into his own net beating his own goaltender, Michael Stiliotis. The goal was credited to Ryan Marker, his 31st of the season. And after 20 minutes of play, we have Delaware with a one to nothing lead. What an impressive fade already for Ryan Marker, uh, feed I should say, as uh, he gets goal number 31 already on the season. Ryan Marker seems like anytime you see him out on the ice, the puck's gonna end up in the back of the net. The only goal of the period belongs to Ryan Marker and it's one nothing Delaware. So we're gonna take a quick break. Of course, as we always do, we're gonna thank our fine sponsors that make Delaware Thunder hockey possible. And of course, we'll encourage you to come back and join us for the next period, where we'll see if the Thunder can come away with a win this weekend as Watertown's taking the first two of this weekend series. After 20 minutes of play, it's the Delaware Thunder one, the Watertown Wolves nothing. We appreciate you tuning in to Delaware Thunder Hockey on YouTube and at DelawareThunder.com. Delaware Thunder Hockey is brought to you in part by Betsy Ross Pizza, Brimming Horn Meadery, Duck Creek Printing, Gatehouse Media, M&T Bank, Easy Loans Incorporated, The Barn, Harrington Insurance, Big Oyster Brewery, 47 ABC, Delaware Prep Ice Hockey, Bridal Bit Liquors, Charlie's Painting, American Hockey Services, Forever Media, Applebee's Grill and Bar, Robert Webster Cosmetic and Family Dentistry, Delmarva Chiropractic and Wellness Center, First Aid Fabrication, Pizza King, Post Acute Medical, Premier Orthopedic Bone and Joint Care, Holiday Inn Express, The Delaware State Lottery, Planet Fitness, Mission Barbecue, THG Transport Incorporated, The YMCA of Dover, CrossFit Dover, Texas Roadhouse, Urco Ceilings and Interiors, Chick-fil-A, MD Mechanical, Fine Line Website and IT Consulting, Super 8, Alpha Care Medical, and Bay Health. We'll be back with the next period's action coming up. You're watching Delaware Thunder Hockey on YouTube. For Mike Basile, I'm Gary Schofield. We'll be back to the action momentarily.
And we welcome you back into Thunderdome. Gary Schofield alongside Mike Basile as we get set for period number two between the Delaware Thunder and the Watertown Wolves. Scoring summary is pretty simple. Ryan Marker unassisted with our only tally of the game, even though it was actually put in the net by Nicholas Calpuzos as he fired a rebound off of Michael Ciliatis into his own net. Delaware leads one to nothing. I was telling you about Carolina and Mentor at the end of the game last night in Carolina, Brody Duncan of the Icebreakers took a puck and fired a slap shot into the Carolina Thunderbirds bench, which led to a brawl, obviously. Duncan's been suspended for 15 games. Michael Bunn was suspended for leaving the bench to get into the altercation. Another member of the Thunderbirds was also suspended. They already had two other players serving suspensions. So their head coach, Andre Nietzsche, had to sign and dress today. He's already committed a penalty and has an assist. The Thunderbirds and the Icebreakers are tied at one after one period of play there. Just crazy. <laughs> well, that series has been an up and down roller coaster of a weekend series. You have the suspensions, Carolina giving them a good thump in last night as well. And you got to think that has something to do with the the, uh, the length of, uh, I shouldn't say the length of the suspension, but that has something to do with Duncan firing the puck into the net, the frustrations of the game. The length of the suspension is more than obvious of what happened. I think, right. like you said, that could have even been one where you look and say, hey, that could be a season ender. There's a great article, and I would uh, encourage you to check it out. Uh, was it bushockeyleague.com? Yes. There's an opinion piece that was written there. It's not attributed to anyone in particular, uh, but suggesting that Duncan should have been banned for life from the FHL because of those actions. And I gotta be honest with you, I don't know that I disagree with that. If you check out the video, uh, there's just no place for it in the sport to well, do what he did. He's lucky that nobody got hurt. You look at it, it's, it's not a hockey play. Right. You can't argue he was trying to fight someone, whatever, it was a bad hit. It wasn't a hockey play, it was just intent to injure. That's all it was, to be honest. Yep. And you know, we have nothing against Duncan in any way, obviously, yeah. as a player, but when you see somebody do that, no matter what team they're on, no matter if they're a member of this Thunder team, a Watertown Wolf, a Thunderbird, it doesn't matter who it is. When you see a complete dangerous and reckless play, if we're gonna be honest, that's exactly what it was, Gary. It was reckless and it was uh, just not thinking whatsoever. That's too unacceptable at any level. Without question, there's no place for it in the sport. Getting ready to get going here in period number two. Marker, Municello, Simonetta out for the Thunder along with Penz and Pisano. It's Boudreaux, Desjardins, Lucas with Sanstebo and Port. Now remember, Lucas and Pisano exchanged uh, a few words there in the first period. We'll see if that carries over. Looked like Pisano was trying to fight everyone at the end of the first period, but didn't get any takers. Off the draw, Lucas loses the puck to Charlie Penns. His clearing attempt, though, is picked off by Boudreaux. Boudreaux throws it into the slot, kind of handcuffed Desjardins a bit, so he plays it back to the point. Now Boudreaux along the wall, he gets pinned by Pisano. Lucas tried to backhand it into the slot, and Marker steals it. Ryan will look to skate out of the Delaware zone. Long pass for Simonetta. He's able to tip it into the Watertown zone and chase. But Vladimir Port gets there first. Port ahead to Lucas. His backhand attempt didn't get too far, and Simonetta just bangs it back into the Wolves zone. Stiliadis plays it behind his net. Sanstabo to Lucas. Lucas with a long pass. That eludes Boxel. They're going to say he got a piece of that, so no icing. Oh, it didn't look like it from up here. Sure didn't. <laughs> Minute in, still 1-0 Delaware. Municello plays one into the Watertown zone. Calpuzos, nice move there to get the puck around Ryan Marker, who's heading to the bench for a change. And he's just holding and waiting for something to break for Watertown. Fires one in, it goes off the pad of Damasa Carlson. Now he'll paddle it to Devine. He takes a body from Boxel. And now Kalinin's finally able to break free and come out through the neutral zone. But offside is Brennan Young again, just a step too quick as Kalinin went sideways a bit there at the blue line. Well, Gary, we talked about it yesterday. That blue line is the one place you can't go east to west unless it's just you and you know you're shorthanded trying to kill some time. <coughs> Defensive zone. The problem there is moving the puck one way or another. I just realized I turned down the wrong mic to cough <laughs> there, so I apologize. Off the face off, pucks loose at the neutral zone. Dunford plays it, he's just gonna bang it in from the red line, goes right into the glove of Stiliadis and he'll hold for a face off. Looked like he really wanted to play that puck. I don't, I don't know, know why he did it. I don't know if he felt like Coachman wasn't coming quick enough to get there. He just decided to hold on to it for the face off, but he kind of threw his head to the side like he didn't really want to do that, but either way, 
Powell and Demon. Kyle Powell with another faceoff win. Devney gets it around Litke and back to center, but Dunford will play it for Delaware. He'll fire it back into the Watertown zone. Natchez will get to it in the corner. He plays it to Marvin Powell. Up the wall, but Evgeny Demons there. Throws it into the slot. Kalinin couldn't get it on the backhand, but Demons got it again in the corner. Anton tried to skate through two wolves, and Natchez takes it away. And now Bontel looks to break out, but his pass a bit too far for Marvin Powell. Second effort gets it back to center. Devney around Litke. He's got a man in the slot. If he can get it to him, and he does, but a save by Damasa Carlson. Bontel didn't get a whole lot on that shot. That's a nice setup, though, from Joe Devney. Now the puck squirts back into the Watertown zone. Well, defensively today, the Delaware Thunder have been phenomenal. They keep everything on the outside. That pass across was a big save by Sebastian Damasa Carlson, but he hasn't had to make too many of those tonight. Kalinin. Walked around two Watertown defenders, but then lost the puck in the corner. And now Devney and Sedenko come into the Delaware zone. Devney, Sedenko shot, saved Damasa Carlson. He bumps the net off its moorings again to let play continue. Eric Masters comes the other way for Delaware. His shot right into the breadbasket of Stiliadis, and he'll hold that for a faceoff. So maybe it wasn't just the net down there. Maybe it is something about the way Damasa Carlson uses the pipes. He does, and I was the same way as a goaltender. I, I was back at my net a little bit from time to time. I used the post to help me push off and slid into it. When you, you feel it, you know where you are in the net. It's just a comfort zone. There's Evan McIntosh in the dot. He wins the draw, shot from Taylor Cutting, and Stiliadis will hold that again. We'll get another face off. Well, on that last shot from Masters and the shot from Cutting there, there are two shots that you're not gonna score off of. So for me, I want that shot low at the pads, not up high. So you get that rebound attempt instead of the whistle, and then you lose the oncoming faceoff. Puck's loose behind the net. Eric Masters tries to work around Sanstebo. Nikita Sedenko goes into the corner. He takes a bump from Cutting, but is able to push the puck further. Bormanis plays it through center. He took a hit from behind as well. Pisano gets to the puck. 16.45 left in the second. 1-0 Delaware. I tell you, Bormanis and Sedenko have been good this weekend, but they've taken a beating, haven't they? They sure have. Did Kieran Devine get stood up at the blue line by Sanstebo? Puck's bouncing, but Taylor Cutting is able to keep it in. Liam Little gets to it first. He gets a bump from Eric Masters. Cutting throws one into the slot, but Vladimir Port takes that away. Taylor steals the clearing attempt. Now that puck bounces off Eric Masters into the Delaware bench, and we'll get another stop at the play. Good looking play by Eric Masters there on that hit. That's clean and beautiful. That third line for the Watertown Wolves, usually more of a checking line the third line, but not for them. It's still a skilled line, not very big. And Delaware's been able to take advantage putting that McIntosh line out against them with cutting and Masters, the biggest three on the ice. Marker, Municello, Simonetta out again for Delaware against Boudreaux, Lucas, and Desjardins. Another faceoff win for Boudreaux, and now he'll walk it out of the Watertown zone. Gets it to Desjardins on the wing. Throws it right into the slot, but Boudreaux just couldn't get his stick on it. And then Lucas got a weak shot on a Damasa Carlson who covers up. Looked like Lucas just kicked the puck towards the front of the net. Obviously, no, that one's not going in, but get the puck going towards the front of the net as Damasa Carlson gets a little help from the official on the equipment. Again, almost had a face off with Damasa Carlson back turn. He takes a long time after plays, and he's got a little ritual if you notice. He puts his head down, looks forward, and then he goes over to where the puck's gonna be dropped. Off the draw, good keep at the blue line by Calpuzos. Desjardins high slot, his shot goes wide. Bounces off the referee, Lucas gets to the rebound, but now it's loose along the wall. Marker's clearing attempt, knocked down by Desjardins. In the corner, Lucas too far for Desjardins that time, and Simonetta plays it to Municello. He'll try to get around Calpuzos, nearly did, but the puck rolls right in on Stiliadis, and he'll cover up for another faceoff. A lot of stoppages in this game. A ton yeah. of them in the first, and we're having the same kind of scenario here in the second. Well, the thing about all the stoppages is you don't really get a rhythm to the game. It's a choppy played game. I don't think it's been a bad game played by yeah. either team thus far, but it is a choppy, slow-moving game, opposed to yesterday with the six goals, obviously, a 10 total, four for Delaware as well. The game really got moving. Demon and Powell on the draw. Evgeny got the win, but Young couldn't get to the puck. Port plays it around. Bonsell's got it there. A little too far for Vladimir, and it gets to Evgeny Demon, but they're able to play it back to center. Fasano, long pass across for Kalina, but then his return pass for Demon was a bit too far. Now that one goes off the skate of Brendan Young, and Kyle Powell will retreat. Play a little catch with Vladimir Port. Now he's pressured by Brendan Young. Puck's loose behind the net. Good play by Brenner. Comes around out of the corner. Tried to walk through two defenders, though, and Bonsell comes away with the puck. His pass deflected by Pisano, but now Devney gets behind 
Anthony walks right in, backhand shot, and Demasa Carlson makes another save. I don't think he realized where the puck was and was just holding on for dear life. It's never good when the goalie looks back like Demasa Carlson did there, but little did he know it was in his paraphernalia as he made the big stop. It's a nice play by Devney to use his speed to work around the big defenseman, Pisano, and gets a good chance. And now the faceoff to the left to Carlson. McIntosh, Alicantrado, and Masters. Bogzel, Powell, and Devney. Kind of a stalemate on the faceoff initially, but then McIntosh is able to play it back into the corner. Now Brandon Contrado clears it ahead. Masters has it on the tape. Masters to McIntosh. Nice play by Marvin Powell to break the puck loose, but McIntosh gets back to it in the corner. Takes a bump, but gets it to Masters. Masters plays it to Contrado. The Thunder will work the cycle here. Dunford from the blue line. His high rising shot goes off the shoulder of Siliadis. It's loose in the slot. McIntosh took a whack at it, but couldn't get much on it. And the puck comes back to center for Bryce Litke. That's a good looking shift again, and here it is. It's Contrado this time with Masters and McIntosh. That puck bounces off the glove of Natras into the Delaware bench, and we'll get another stoppage of play. A VIP puck for a little fan there, which is always great to see. Puck bounced up out of play off the stick of McIntosh at the near wards. Evans asking the referee about why he didn't get a high sticking call, apparently in the scrum there in the slot. Feels like he got a stick up high. I think it was Eric Masters. Stay five on five here. Marker loses the faceoff to Boudreaux. I'll tell you, Derek Boudreaux has been absolutely phenomenal in the faceoff circle all weekend long. Now the puck comes loose to him. He's across the blue line. Tried to find Desjardins in the slot, but that pass was deflected by Charlie Pens. Desjardins gets to it, passed too far for Lucas, but now Calpuzos in the circle. Wines fakes the shot after Municello went down, but now he gets it right to Boudreaux in the high slot. Shot saved to Massa Carlson. Puck now in the corner, Desjardins loses. Calpuzos keeps it in though, coming in from the D spot. Works in the corner, checked by Marker. Puck comes loose, it's in skates. Ryan plays it along further, but not out. Desjardins plays it back in, where Derek Boudreaux will race with Charlie Pens. Charlie takes him to the wall. Puck still loose along the wall though. He's under Boudreaux for a moment, then Desjardins walks out in front, takes a shot. Demasa Carlson made the save, but again, didn't know where the rebound was, but Ryan Marker's there to clean it up. Puck still loose in the neutral zone. Lucas, his shot deflects off a stick. Off the near wall, right in front of the Watertown bench. Simonetta tried to get it into the Watertown zone. But Desjardins comes back the other way. He needs a change, though. He'll just play it deep into the Delaware corner. Well, my big question is for Sebastian De Massa Carlson. He practices here every day, and the net doesn't seem to come off when he's practicing. So that's a question to me. Puck loose in the skates of Sanstebo, but he did a good job to keep Marker from getting free. De Massa Carlson plays it off the wall. Pisano throws it right into the Watertown bench. And that'll lead to another stop with 12.57 to go. And that's just a good looking couple shifts for the Wolves. And it seems like, Gary, to correct me if I'm wrong here, but doesn't it seem like this game, two minutes one way, two minutes the next way, Delaware two minutes, Watertown two minutes. Yep. It just seems like it's choppy in between hockey. Absolutely. Last two minutes go to Watertown. After throwing that puck into the bench, Pisano's got plenty to say to the Wolves bench. We're missing a centerman for the Thunder. Finally, here comes Eric Masters. He'll take the draw between Contrado and Cutting. Now Brandon throws him out of the circle. Up, oh, but now they'll have to switch back. Maybe not. All sorts of confusion here. Finally, we'll get Contrado and Lito on the draw. Cutter's able to play it further, but Sanstebo takes Watertown back the other way. Puck hops over the stick of Sedenko. Loose in the slot, Liam Little gets to it. Avoids a hit from cutting and just kicks it along. Gets through Devine. Bormanis didn't realize that's where the puck was. And now Kieran plays it off the glass, hits the netting, and another stoppage of play with 12.41 to go. I think it also hit Bormanis on the way out. Delaware was safe there. And Sedanko and Bormanis have been really good. You question, you know, they just left this Thunder team. You think they're playing with a little more heart against their former team. Certainly could make a big difference. And then another shot from Sedanko is deflected by Pisano out of play. Five seconds off the clock and another stop. Well, you look at the at, at any sport, really. You know, it's a revenge game yes. type of thing where, you know, you're. Uh, this is in the game number three, so, you know, at this point it's probably faded a bit. But you just leave Delaware, you get traded to Watertown, which is a great organization, obviously, right. in the FBHL. And you want to beat the team you just left, obviously. And for Delaware, they want to beat these guys saying, hey, we still can win games. 
Anthony Pisano tries to clear it out of the zone and a puck into the Raptors and four seconds off the clock and another stop. Gary, has the clock moved this period? 12.32 it's to go in the second. It doesn't feel like it. You know, the first period took 45 real-time minutes to play. This one's going to take two hours. It sure feels <laughs> that way. I think it's the hockey gods that know that I'm off tomorrow and I'm looking forward to, like, being off. So they're going to drag things out for us. This is enjoyable, though, for you, Gary. It you get is. to spend I, time with me. Listen, I always say <laughs> this is my happy place, and even happier that I get to stand next to you and do it. <laughs> Puck comes loose, and Kieran Devine will play it ahead. I say that with all sincerity, by the way. Ryan Marker winds and takes a slap shot. That went right off of the ankle of Justin Coachman, and he's slow to get up. And now Watertown comes back the other way. Lucas holds, throws it in front, trying to get Desjardins. Not sure if Demasa Carlson got the skate or the stick on it, but either way, Delaware now comes back. Simonetta in the circle, fires a shot, pad saves Stiliatis, and now Municello will carry behind. Simonetta holds, Coachman still out there after taking that shot off the leg. Not moving very well. You can tell that's a stinger. Boudreaux will backhand it to him. Gary, that's where this long change comes in here for Coachman. If it was the first period, he would have been able to get off by now, but with the puck having to get deep for a defenseman to get off, he hasn't been able to. Now he will. Boudreaux plays it into the corner. Young spills. Boxel tried to avoid the hit from Pens and just played it into the empty corner. And De Cristofaro is able to get it back to center. This one's going to go all the way down, though, and probably be icing on Delaware, and it is. Puck was bouncing the whole way down past the red line. Keeping tabs on that Carolina mentor game as well here. That's a big game for Mentor. If they could find a way to steal one in Carolina, extend that lead over Delaware, and Delaware will need to win to keep pace. Delaware would love to see Carolina sweep that series, make up three points here today. Especially if they can come away with a win. Mentor right now leading the Thunderbirds 2-1. to 11-16 to go in the second period. Delaware leads 1-0. Watertown doing a good job of pressuring here over the last five minutes or so. They've created some good scoring chances, but haven't been able to solve Damasa Carlson just yet. Puck from the point comes loose, and Bogsel plays it back to Natras, but it goes under his stick and back to center. And then Natras fans on the pass. Marker nearly got to it. Good play by Marvin Powell, but the puck comes right back to Ryan. Ryan will work back to the blue line. Throws it in front. The puck's bouncing. It's loose in the slot. Finally, Kyle Powell is able to corral it and at least carry it behind his net to Natras, and Watertown gets out. Another great chance created by Ryan Marker. Devney with Sedenko. His shot muted by Penns. It comes loose to the near wall. Demon gets it to Kalina. And Anton spins around Kyle Powell and gets it back to center. Now Brennan Young carries into the Watertown zone. Tried to get around Sanstebo. Backhand shot. Stiliotis got a piece of that and sends it to the far wall. Devney now pressured by Brennan Young. Marvin Powell plays it further. Devney didn't realize the puck was there at first. And now Kalina comes away with it. Tried to backhand one into the slot. That was blocked by Marvin Powell. Liam Little loses the puck. Still loose in the corner. Finally, Devney's got it. His little chip pass was overstated, though, and it comes to Kalinin. Kalinin walks into the slot. Good D by Marvin Powell again. And here comes Sedenko the other way. His pass too far for Liam Little. He'll go to the corner with Brian Dunford. Puck still loose. Sedenko gets there. He's marked by Bryce Litke. They still battle in the corner. Sedenko comes away with it and gets it to Bormanis. Bormanis works around the circle. Good puck movement, but then Demon with the good poke check gets it back into the Watertown zone. 9.35 to go. Borman is trying to keep it away from Evgeny Demon. Good pressure by the Thunder centerman, but then he loses his stick. Vladimir Port off the wall through the legs of Liam Little, and Brian Dunford will play it there for Delaware. How about the work by Demon chasing Borman? It's all the way back into his own zone. Talked about being the best two-way forward, and he just cements it there. Loft pass from Dunford too far for Masters. Sanstebo holds for Watertown. I think this is the longest stretch of play we've had nonstop in the game thus far. Bryce Litke. As we approach the nine minute mark of the second period, Dunford fans on that attempt, but luckily gets the puck right back and is able to play it off the wall to center, but Derek Boudreaux picks it up there. He'll chip one for Lucas. Good play for by Dunford to block that pass. Now Eric Masters has it. Masters tries to work through two defenders, and again, kind of tough to go one on two. And he loses the puck back to center where Pisano will play it. Here in Divine. He'll just fire one all the way down. This should be icing. His Sanstebo's there. We'll get a face off. See, I jinxed it by saying it was the longest stretch we've had nonstop in the game. Well, it looked like he was looking for the stick of Eric Masters, but even if Masters had got a touch on it, I'm pretty sure he looked just to be a step behind that red line. Might have been able to slow the puck down enough if he got a piece, though. That thing was coming in hot. Sure was. 8.34 left in the second. 1-0 Delaware. 
Powell, Bogzel, Devney out for the Wolves. McIntosh with Contrado and Masters. The front line for Delaware. Off the draw, McIntosh wins it. Pisano spins away from Devney. Passes ahead, good one on the tape to McIntosh. Three on two if the Thunder hurry. Masters winds it, fires, and a save by Stiliadis left a juicy rebound. But Marvin Powell does a good job to get it to Boxel, who just throws it off the wall. Devney was in front of Pisano, but he was also offside. So that play will come back outside of the blue line. I think the Wolves bench unhappy with the call, but I, I mean, the puck was, was well offside, behind right? Devney, was it not? I thought so. This is the media timeout. And initially, I was thinking that they were talking about whether it was actually offside, but they're not. Media timeout, 8.16 to play. Of course, uh, meet and greet with the Thunder players after the game. If you're watching on YouTube and you're here in the building, make sure you stick around for that. Also, if you're not here and you're watching on YouTube or on DelawareThunder.com, remember, back at the Thunderdome, February 7th and 8th, the Danbury Hat Tricks back in town. It was a great entertaining weekend when they were here two weeks ago. Should be another couple of good games. Tickets available at DelawareThunder.com. Yeah, anytime Danbury comes to time, town, you know you're going to get good size, good speed, and a physical game. And what more can you ask for if you're a hockey fan? You're probably going to see some fights. You know you're going to see some goals because Danbury is a really quick team. As you see, Stiliadis and Demasa Carlson exchange a, a bit of a fist pound there. The two goalies, obviously, both playing well, respect each other right, quite a bit. Appreciating the good work they both put in tonight. Well, I have to say for the Delaware Thunder, I think they've bared down defensively tonight, and that's behind a goaltender who's new to this league, who's just seeing his first home game, and they've been huge for him. Great play. Devine with a shot from the point that was deflected by Municello just wide. Simonetta gets to the puck. Ryan Marker in the corner. Marker holds, throws one in front. Good deflection by Calpuzos. Kept that from getting to Simonetta. But Simonetta gets to the puck. Trying to work around behind. Puck's loose behind the net. Municello can't get a stick on it. And finally, Watertown clears. Pisano will chase for the Thunder. No icing here as the puck didn't have enough steam. Pisano's pass muted there by Devney, but he gets a second chance. Plays it to Kieran Devine. Ryan Marker will just flip it back to center. Devney tries to knock it down in the skates of Municello. And Calpuzos holds it up there. Good pass on the tape of Michael Desjardins. He comes into the Thunder zone with speed. Side angle shot goes off the outside of the net. And the net again off its moorings, and we get another stoppage of play. And now we're starting to see the Watertown bench become irate. And the frustration from Powell as he speaks to the ref. The referee throws his arms up. What do you want me to do? I think he may again be asking possibly about that play. Maybe something to happen behind the play because he's pointing back at this end of the ice. But either way, fruitless argument, although it could pay off for him later. False start on the draw between Boudreau and Demon. They try it again. Pucks in skates, comes back to Marvin Powell. His shot from the points deflected off the leg of Demon. In the slot to Lucas it came, and then his shot was muted by Penns. And it slowly rolls in on Demasa Carlson for the cover. Carlson doesn't like to help the officials out, huh? He leaves that puck on the ice where you see most goalies pick it up and get it over to him. But there's been a ton of talking with the officials tonight. I just don't understand it. At what point do the officials say, okay, enough? Right. Off the draw, another win for Watertown. Natris plays it around behind. Boudreaux will chase with Charlie Penns there. Penns gets it to Kalina. Nice little touch pass for Brendan Young, but he couldn't work around Marvin Powell. I gotta tell you, Powell's had a really steady weekend on the blue line for Watertown. Kenny Demon takes that puck away from Boudreaux. Tried to work around Desjardins, good poke check there, but it comes right to DeCristofaro, but then he loses the handle, and here comes Watertown. Two on one quickly if they hurry. Michael Desjardins holds the puck, shot saved to Massa Carlson. Into the corner, Lucas will play it along further. Desjardins will get to it for Watertown. Desjardins turns at the circle, works around through the slot, now will turn back, fires a shot, that goes wide. Lucas takes a spill. And the puck's going to come all the way to center as Kalinin carries it out. Anton crisscrosses with Brennan Young. Natras poke checks the puck away to center, though. And DeCristofaro will just bang it back in as the Thunder will go for a change. Haven't seen many of these tight checking games so far this season, but this is one of them. Not many defensive breakdowns either way. Boxel walks right out in front as he tried to get the puck through the forehand. A nice little poke check by Damasa Carlson. Got it free, and then Kyle Powell plays it blindly to the wall. Nobody home. And now a race between Brennan Young and Justin Coachman. Brennan Young gets there initially, 
but then loses control to Calpuzo, so will play it up the wall to Devney. Devney, a little backhand touch pass to Kyle Powell. Puck rolling a bit, throws it in front for Bonsell. Puck handcuffed him a bit, but he's able to throw it back in front. That deflected off Damasa Carlson to the near wall. He bangs bodies with Bryce Litke, and Eric Masters comes away with the puck. Masters across the blue line. He'll hold, fires a shot. That's off the blocker of Stiliadis and into the netting for another stoppage of play. That's great work by Eric Masters to get back and fill in on a roll defensively. Looked like he just did enough to cause a bit of an interruption on that pass cross ice and the shot from Bogsell just off the end of his stick and rolls to the side of the net. You know, we talked about it, it looked like the Thunder had the jump as far as the fresher legs early on in this game. Kind of seems like Watertown starting to find their stride a bit, creating some chances. But again, Damasa Carlson has been up to the task every time called upon so far tonight. Dunford pinches from his D spot, but over skates. Simonetta does a good job to retreat and at least disrupt the play enough to let Bryce Litke clear it out. But now the puck comes back into the Delaware zone. Liam Little will pressure Litke there. Throws it back to the blue line. That's an offside play as Little buried Litke along the far wall. Yep, Bryce pops up right back to his feet. He's all right, that's just a good clean hit by Little. Litke turned at the last second. If you're gonna turn at the last second, you do give yourself up there. Right. As you mentioned, it's been a good tight checking hockey game, and although there's been a lot of fits and starts to it. Both teams have had good chances. There's been good goaltending. It's, it's been a good game. This is kind of reminiscent of the game we had last night until the penalties did Delaware in. A hundred percent correct. The penalties last night really, I don't want to say ruined a good hockey game because you know, you're not putting blame on anybody here. I just, uh, you, you can know. say it. <laughs> I would say it. The penalties <laughs> definitely ruined a good hockey game last night, I think. I'm not pointing fingers, though, Gary. No. <laughs> Simonetta in the corner. Holding. Cross ice too far for Pisano. Now Anthony's got a retreat. He gets it back to Kieran Devine. We're under five minutes to go in the second period. Delaware holding on to a 1-0 lead. Pisano gets it to Municello. He loses the puck. But now Marker will battle with Natras in the corner. And it comes back to Municello. He'll play it behind on the stick of Marker. Ryan comes around. Loses the puck momentarily, but gets it back. Spins around Marvin Powell, and he's continuing to hold. The Thunder Pack banging the drums. Ryan Marker throws one in front. Stiliadis never saw it, and it got right through the goal mouth, and then a shot from Kieran Devine. Stiliadis saw that one, got it right in the bread basket, and holds on for the stop. Well, if you're Coach McClan or your Coach Charlie Penn Sr., you, you gotta be happy with how this game's been played. In Watertown down the goal, yes, but I think Delaware, from a defensive standpoint, this has got to be one of the best games we've seen them play behind goaltender Sebastian Damasic Arslan or Aaron Taylor. I would agree without question. I mean, they've made a dip. They haven't had the trouble getting out of their own zone that we've seen the first two nights of this series. It's been pretty much one and done for Watertown, even when they do have a chance. So you're absolutely right. Here's another shot. Kyle Powell saved Damasic Carlson. And as you said, Daniel DeCristoforo right on the rebound, right back to the neutral zone and Colleen in the other way. Anton's drop pass is blocked by Sanstabo, but he'll play it around to an empty corner. And Evgeny Demon's able to play it further. Brennan Young knocked it down, but now Sanstabo carries. His clearing attempts deflected. And Demon keeps it in again. Evgeny gets the puck back. Tried to get it to Brennan Young. Good stick work by Vladimir Port. Now Demon in the slot saves Stiliadis. Behind the net, Young tried to wrap around and couldn't get it home. He's walled by Kyle Powell. Pucks in skates. They try to work it free, and Anton Kalinin does. Anton gets a push from Sanstabo, but plays it to Evgeny Demon. Evgeny spins away from Vladimir Port. Gives it to Kalinin, but it was in his skates. De Cristofaro couldn't keep it in, then fumbled the puck. Now he's in a battle with Bogsel. Comes to Devney in the slot. Nice pass, and then Derek Bogsel's pass back for Port is intercepted by Demon. Demon's able to play it ahead to Brennan Young. Young turns back at the blue line, but holds. Now he'll take a shot. Stiliadis saw that all the way and just hold for the faceoff. Just seems like this line's trying to do a little too much between Kalinin and Demon. Get pucks to the net. And Brennan Young found that soft spice a couple times up high in that slot area. They just haven't been able to find him. Certainly like the cycle game that they had going there on that line. And I'll give you credit. You mentioned Brennan Young playing with those two guys that you were excited to see what, how they would work together. And so far, it's been pretty successful. Now watch out, Watertown coming back the other way on a break. Desjardins avoids the poke check from Devine. Shot from Lucas, just got under that one a bit and throws it into the netting. Although Damasa Carlson, again, followed the play well, was in good position and maybe forced Lucas to think he had to get that puck a little higher. 
Well, Jamie Lucas brought his pitching wedge to a hockey game there as that one's directed straight up and out of play off his own stick, and he'd love to have that chance back. Three minutes to go, one nothing Delaware. Boudreaux wins another faceoff. Calpuzos will wind and fire. That gets deflected wide. Devine trying to keep Boudreaux away from the puck, and he does. But now reinforcements for Watertown as they'll battle to a side. It comes to Desjardins. Nice pass in front. Desjardins with a backhand shot and a save by Damasa Carlson with the mitt. McIntosh plays it ahead to Contrato and Delaware's out of the zone. And now we get a whistle. Oh, the net came off again. And that's why we got the whistle. Kind of surprising he would blow it there with Delaware carrying the puck in the other direction though, right? You can't blow that puck dead with the puck. You can't blow that play dead with the puck coming out the other way. It's just not how it works. There's plenty of time to get that puck back on when Delaware is coming out the other way. And the faceoff will come all the way back into the Delaware zone as well. Just to the right of Damasa Carlson, who's been good tonight. That was the save of the night though, with that backhand stop from Lucas. Off the draw, puck comes to Municello, bounces across the blue line. Simonetta gets it to Marker. Marker into the Watertown zone. He'll just throw it behind the net. Simonetta gets to it. Spins away from one Watertown defender and gets it to Marker. He's marked by Coachman. But he'll just carry it around the wall, waiting for something to break. Now he tries to spin away from one Wolves defender. The Coachman stands him up there. Now they'll battle for the puck again. Lucas in the fray, so is Municello. Boudreaux comes away with it. Derek tries to work around Pens, and he does as Charlie missed with the hip check. Oh, nice play by Municello to get a stick on that pass for Lucas, and here comes Ryan Marker the other way. Across the blue line, he'll hold, works into the slot, fires a shot deflected by Coachman. Never got to Stiliitis. Puck in the corner, though, comes to Marker, throws it in front. Good back check by Boudreaux to keep Municello from getting a shot on net. Charlie Pens will just fire it in. It bounces on to Stiliitis, loose in the slot, and Coachman will play it to Calpusos calmly. Boudreaux's pass a little behind Bogsel, but he gets it on the tape. Bogsel walks in, now he'll spin back. Waiting for something to come free in front. Backhand pass across for Kyle Powell. Powell throws it into the slot to Bogsel as they'll switch spots here. Back on top, Vladimir Port. He'll fire one on that and scores! Damasa Carlson went down on the screen. I believe it was Lucas who got in front of the net to provide the screen. And Damasa Carlson never saw the shot. I believe that'll go to Port and we're tied at one. Looked like it was Lucas who bumped Dunford into goaltender Sebastian De Massa Carlson. Not sure if this is gonna count or not, but it looks like it will now. That'll tie the game at one. So Vladimir Port, who had the game winning goal Friday night, it was his first of the season. I believe he notches his second of the year there. I don't believe anybody got a stick on it in front. I think it was just the screen and the bump. And now Pisano, Pisano really wants Devney to go. I don't think that's gonna happen. They got Young back at the point now. Look at Brennan, he's like, what am I doing back yep. here? <laughs> Off the draw, Watertown controls. They'll just backhand it into the Delaware zone. But you know, this has been a common theme for the Thunder this year as well. Giving up goals late in periods has been an Achilles heel for them. Puck comes loose, Kalinin still controls, skates around two Watertown defenders into the corner. He's bumped by Desjardins. Puck comes back to Kieran Devine. He'll throw it into the corner. Now it's Brennan Young. Younger, marked by Port, the goal scorer. Powell can't get it by Devine, though. And now Kalina to Demon. Demon's shot blocked by Sanstabo. Demon gets back to the puck, though. Now Brennan Young in the corner. He'll play it in deep. Demon trying to spin away from Sanstabo. Still on the puck, though. Backhand's one behind the net for Kalina. Anton gets to it. Big hit from Sanstabo. Came up high a bit there, too. Delaware bench wanted a penalty. We're not going to get one. Devney's got the puck. 30 seconds to go in the period as Kalina comes to the bench. Well, that's a missed call, plain and simple. Anytime there's head contact, it's a penalty, and that one's missed. Devney with a big slap shot to Massa Carlson. Saw that all the way, and he'll hold on to the face for the faceoff with 21 seconds left in the period. A little more chirping now from both benches. And that Charlie asking the official. You can see the elbow get up there. And all the official said is, come on. Which, well, again, I know there's a size difference there be between Sanstabo and Kalinin, but uh, that hit was definitely a little high. A little. Off the draw, Calpuzos will play it in deep. Boudreaux's got it behind the net. 15 seconds left in the frame. Charlie Pens plays it off the wall, bounces past Municello and back to center. But now Calpuzos has the puck bounce off his stick, but a good job to keep Ryan Marker away from it. He's just going to try to hold on to let the last couple of seconds wind down, and he does. 
We're through two periods of play. Vladimir Port, the only goal scorer of the second period, as this game's now tied at one as we'll head to the final frame. This is sort of where we thought we were headed last night when it was 2-2 with about you know a minute and 37 seconds or so left before that roughing call against Charlie Penns when Watertown was able to bang in two power play goals in 12 seconds. Right, and that's what we talk about when we say the penalties ruined a good game because if we're being quite frank, that's what happened yesterday. I mean, you had a really good hockey game, a really good hockey game, a 2-2 game, and then a couple soft calls, and then even the slash on Pisano. Listen, I understand right. it might have been a slash, but there comes a point in the game when you're already short a man, a hack on the shin guard is not going to hurt anybody. Now, Kyle Powell had lost the league lead in assists to Ahmed Mahfouz after Ahmed had two last night for Elmira but now he moves back into a tie with Mafuz, 38 assists, leading the FHL as he gets a helper along with Dominic Boxel on the goal by Vladimir Port, who came into the weekend with no goals on the season. Now he's got two, had the game winner Friday night, and he ties the game up here at one after two periods of play. Again, and you know, we, we talked early on in the period about how it had been, you know, fits and starts, fits and starts, lots of whistles. Finally, about the midway point, this game really started to find its rhythm, and it's been a lot of fun. Right, it has been good. I mean, there's still been some whistles, yes, yes. I'd like to go back and take a look. Unfortunately, no replay here for us yet being an expansion team. We're working on it. We'll get something going. But I'm just curious to see. It looked like from up here, L Lucas and Dunford were both in front of the Massa Carlson. Dunford did make the contact, but I'm curious to go back and look and see if Lucas gave him the push in there. But obviously, that's a save he makes if he's on all <laughs> in, in right. balance, I should say. Yeah, I mean, he was sprawling down to the ice as the puck came into the goal crease. So, but I, that, I, I'll tell you, though, that was great puck control by Bogsel to even set that shot up for Port. I mean, he carried that, that puck from one side of the offensive zone all the way around the wall to set up that play. In so, the midst of the rest of his line mates making a change. Exactly. So give Bogsel a ton of credit for setting that play up and Port for taking the shot and taking advantage of the screen. So that's where we stand after two periods of play. We are tied at one. We're gonna thank our sponsors for bringing you Delaware Thunder Hockey, which of course wouldn't be possible without the support of them. So we ask you in turn to support those fine sponsors if you're a fan of Thunder Hockey and appreciation. After two periods of play, it's the Watertown Wolves one, the Delaware Thunder one, the Thunder trying to salvage a win out of this weekend series. We'll be back with period number three next. For Mike Basile, I'm Gary Schofield. You're watching the Thunder on YouTube. Delaware Thunder Hockey is brought to you in part by Betsy Ross Pizza, Brimming Horn Meadery, Duck Creek Printing, Gatehouse Media, M&T Bank, Easy Loans Incorporated, the Barn, Harrington Insurance, Big Oyster Brewery, 47 ABC, Delaware Prep Ice Hockey, Bridal Bit Liquors, Charlie's Painting, American Hockey Services, Forever Media, Applebee's Grill and Bar, Robert Webster Cosmetic and Family Dentistry, Delmarva Chiropractic and Wellness Center, First Aid Fabrication, Pizza King, Post Acute Medical, Premier Orthopedic Bone and Joint Care, Holiday Inn Express, The Delaware State Lottery, Planet Fitness, Mission Barbecue, THG Transport Incorporated, The YMCA of Dover, CrossFit Dover, Texas Roadhouse, Urco Ceilings and Interiors, Chick-fil-A, MD Mechanical, Fine Line Website and IT Consulting, Super 8, Alpha Care Medical, and Bay Health. We'll be back with the next period's action coming up. You're watching Delaware Thunder Hockey on YouTube. For Mike Basile, I'm Gary Schofield. We'll be back to the action momentarily.
And we welcome you back into Thunderdome as we get set for the third period between the Watertown Wolves and the Delaware Thunder, tied at one. A couple of numbers for you. The Wolves have outshot Delaware 29-24 through two periods. That means 28 saves for DeMassa Carlson, Sebastian DeMassa Carlson making his second start in net for the Thunder. And on the other side, for Michael Stiliadis, he's made 23 saves on 24 shots, and the only goal he's allowed actually came off of his own teammate uh, that was credited to Ryan Marker, so that's where we stand at 1-1. Around the FHL, we got one other game underway, and it has some meaning for Thunder fans. The Mentor Icebreakers lead the Carolina Thunderbirds after two periods by a score of three to one. Declan Conway with a pair of goals. He's now got 28 on the season. Kyle Powell has moved back into a tie for the league lead in assists as he got the secondary helper on the goal from Vladimir Port. But as we stand tied at one coming into the third period, uh, and what's been a really good back and forth, tight checking, well played defensively uh, uh, hockey game. What do you expect to see as we get ready for the third period? More of the same, quite frankly. They know it's 20 minutes to win a hockey game, just like we thought it was going to be yesterday, just like we thought, 20, right. just like it was Friday, 20 minutes to win a hockey game. Look at both these goals tonight. You have the one that came off your own teammate for Stiliadis, and then on the other end, you have Demasa Carlson. You were interfered with in front. It looked like it was Dunford, went back and looked. I couldn't yeah. tell if Lucas gave him a bump into him, though we'll have to take another check out at that because obviously that goal is huge right now. Right. That has us tied at one as we get set to get back underway here for the third period. Teams have switched sides. We'll see who they send out to start this final frame. Looks like it's gonna be Simonetta, Municello, and Marker for Delaware. Probably with Pisano and Pens on the blue line. And then for Watertown, looks like they're gonna go with Coachman and Powell, Lucas Boudreaux, Desjardins. Although it might be Galpuzos. Powell might just be stretching out here. Yeah, you don't get the roster card for every uh, every period here, Gary. So right. we got to be able to sort it out. But you are correct. Powell was just getting a loose out there on the ice. And again, Derek Boudreau has been phenomenal in the faceoff circle all weekend long. He'll look to win one here and get Watertown off to a good start. We're underway in the third. Marker actually wins the faceoff. And Municello is going to go right to the box after tripping Lucas, who was chasing the puck. So eight seconds in. Watertown's going to go to the man advantage with a chance to break this tie. And it's Municello who will head to the box for a trip and just unacceptable right to start the third period. It seems like it sounds like a broken record. And it was clearly a penalty, man. There's no question. He got the stick into the feet of Lucas. And you know, as you said, you just can't have it. And it's been an epidemic problem for the Delaware Thunder all season long. And they'll look to keep Watertown off the board here. Third power play opportunity for the Wolves. Shot from Kyle Powell is deflected by Marker, and that goes out of play. No, it didn't. That puck never went out of play. Why the whistle? Oh, sorry, the net <laughs> came off. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the net did come off. I was going to say, that's frustrating for the Delaware Thunder is now another faceoff's in deep, but why am I surprised? Right. <laughs> Ryan Marker and Boutreau again on the circle. The puck bounces off the linesman there. It comes loose at the point. Kyle Powell will get it for Watertown. No backhand to Lucas. Lucas holds at the circle. Back up top to Powell. they will play a little catch here. As Lucas looks for something down low, he'll hand it off to Boudreaux. Boudreaux is going to skate all the way to the top. Down low to Desjardins on the circle, but the puck was in his skates. Comes out in front. Lucas with a shot. Demasa Carlson made the save. Clearing attempt by Marker, knocked down by Boudreaux. Calpuzos back to Boudreaux, fakes the shot, gets it to Desjardins. Boudreaux took a big hit from Pisano, but Lucas has the puck behind the net. Watertown bench was looking for a penalty there as Pisano's hit they thought came a little late, but it looked like Boudreaux just let go of the puck. Lucas holds in the corner. Back up top to Powell. Down to a minute left on the power play. Boudreaux backhands one in front, but Desjardins fanned on it. But it comes to Calpuzos at the point. His pass though, Came off the heel of his stick and Ryan Marker comes back the other way. Now he'll just play it back to center. Try to kill some valuable penalty time. All the way back behind his own net. Kieran Devine as the Wolves will change. Devney and Boggs will jump out as well as Coachman. 
And now Marker will just fire it all the way into the Watertown zone. We're down to 40 seconds left on the power play. That's a dangerous play by Marker. That shot was way high from the defensive zone. If that hits the protective netting at the other end, that's a two-minute penalty. Bogzel tried to walk through Kalinin, but gets stripped of the puck. And now Kalinin and Demon come back two on two here. Evgeny Demon holds, spins back. Now he'll just play it into the corner. Kieran Devine wanted that pass to take a shot on net, but instead Kalinin will just walk it out and try to kill off the rest of this penalty. 12 seconds left. Dunford bangs it off the wall. It'll go in on Stiliadis, and he'll hand it off to Sanstabo. Only five seconds left, and it looks like the Thunder have killed the penalty. Phenomenal kill. Boudreaux fumbles the puck, but gets it back along the far wall. In the corner, it comes to Bogsel. He looked to hand it to Devney. Instead, it's stolen by Dunford. And he's just going to loft it all the way into the Watertown zone. This should be icing. As Sanstabo just beats Kalina to the hash. So the faceoff will come back down in front of Damasa Carlson. And the whistle filled second leads into an early start full of whistles in the third period. And he just can't get a rhythm going. Almost wonder, like, did Dunford think the power play was still on there? And because it looked like he had some room to kind of walk that out of his own if he wanted to. Yeah, yeah, every once in a while a defenseman gets a little nervous there with the pressure bearing down and you know, either way, you don't want to turn it over there, so. Face-off win there by Demon, but then Dunford's pass for Kalinin too far. I thought Kalinin got a stick on that, but it might have been prior to the red line. It was prior to the red line. He played it right through the legs of the defenseman Powell as well. So icing again, it'll come right back down in front of Damasa Carlson. Desjardins, Boudreaux, Lucas out for Watertown. Demon with Young and Kalinin. Off the draw, Demon wins another one. That's two in a row that Boudreaux's lost. I don't think that's happened all weekend. Puck comes to Anton Kalinin. He'll play it off the wall to Brendan Young. Now Younger tried to get it around Natras. He gets tripped up, and now Delaware is going to go to the power play. Not sure who got the stick in the skates of Brendan Young. Looks like Natras is going to go to the box for Watertown. Yeah, and that's just a play where Brendan Young kept the feet moving as he got to buy Natras, and all Natras could do is trip him up and Natras complaining going to the box but just like the Minicello penalty same thing yeah. not much to say the tripping penalty is usually the easiest to call for officials I would say interference and tripping that, and that one was delay of the game <laughs> and that was clear Demon, Kalinin, Pisano we saw Pisano really good in front of the net last time and now here comes Lucas on a shorthanded break one on one with Damasa Carlson and he scores beats him to the blocker side to give Watertown a two to one lead a Jamie break. Lucas is 14th of the season. I'm sorry, Mike. A breakaway goal. The captain, Charlie Penn, fell at the blue line. It looked like he was looking for some help at the blue line. There was only one man at the point. I understand on the power play. But off the faceoff, you have to have a second guy there. They do not. Watertown scores shorthanded, and it's 2-1. That's the 13th shorthanded goal that Delaware has allowed this season. Seventh time that Watertown has scored shorthanded. Just that's six a, seconds into the man It's advantage. a heartbreaker. It's a heartbreaker. Uh, no, no way around that being a heartbreaker for the Delaware Thunder. And now you're looking for the equalizer instead of the leading goal. And before the faceoff, Damasa Carlson knocks the net off the floor. Looks like he's getting some help on that equipment. Right. Maybe he did that just to get the attention of the official. And then knocked the net off for good measure. Right. <laughs> so Delaware will keep uh, the same, almost the same group out. It's to Cristofaro who's out with Marker. Demon, Colleen, and Pisano up front. It's Little, Desjardins, Calpuzo's coachman for Watertown. Off the draw, Cristofaro behind his own net, pressured by Little, and he hands it off to Ryan Marker. Marker will carry it out of the Delaware zone, now trailing two to one. Across the blue line, he'll work around behind the net. Now he'll play it to Demon. Demon to Cristofaro, winds and fires. I think that got coachman in front of Stiliadis, and then the puck goes into the Watertown net. Poor coach, he's taking a beating today. That's at least the third shot that's gone off his legs, and that was a blister from DeCristofaro. Yeah, DeCristofaro, not the biggest defenseman out there, but he's got a heck of a shot, and Coachman had that block early in the period. Also, I know took a couple shots from Pisano in this game as well, so those don't feel well. And playing four games in five days, it'll wear you down. Devin wins another faceoff. Kalinin has the puck along the wall. Tried to get it to Demon. Good stick work by Vladimir Port. And now the puck's loose, and Lucas is able to clear it all the way down. And it eludes Demasa Carlson, and now Boudreaux is going to get to it first. Works around behind, gets takes a hit from Ryan Marker, but gets the puck to Lucas. Jamie Lucas 
Works into the high slot. Now he'll just skate it all the way back into his own zone. Long pass to Sanstebo. We're under a minute to go on the power play. Well, this is a good kill by the Wolves here. They're smart. Look at this. Boudreaux's going to get to the puck first again. And it bounces over the stick of Tobasa Carlson once more. Now Boudreaux works around to Cristofaro. There's a loose stick in front of the net. And that pass deflected off Tobasa Carlson. That was actually his paddle down on the ice. And now Ryan Marker comes back the other way. Steps around Little. Fires a shot. Handcuffs Stiliadis a bit. Rebound comes back to Kalinin at the blue line. Thunder now set up. 30 seconds left on the power play. Kalinin to Cristofaro, one-timer. Loose in front. Brennan Young backhands it. Still loose at the side of the net, and Sanstebo plays it into the corner. Young's played great tonight. That's a good effort by him in front to get it right back to the front of the net. To Cristofaro, winds and fires. Deflection from Pisano goes off the crossbar and bounces all the way back to the neutral zone where Marker recovers. Perfectly executed tip by Pisano, nearly in the toy department. That's just about going to do it for the power play. Three seconds left. Marker turns. He'll wind. Fakes the shot, though. Now he holds and he'll just throw it into the corner. We're back to even strength. Anton Kalinin gets to the puck. Now he takes a hit from behind from Bogsel. Now he's bumped off the puck from Liam Little, but it comes to Marker's side of the net. His shot from a tough angle goes off the shoulder of Stiliadis, and now here comes Bogsel. He's got reinforcements behind him as well. Bogsel tried to get Sanstebo, and that handcuffed him a bit, and he fans on the shot. Charlie Penn's behind the net. He'll just throw it around the wall back to center. Comes to Brendan Young. He bumps the linesman but beats Sanstebo to the puck. Young turns, pucks in his skates, and he'll just play it into the corner. Marker steps away, right into the high slot, fires a shot, Pat saves Stiliadis. Rebound comes to the far wall. Worked around Contrado, and now I think it hits somebody on the bench and we get a whistle. Yeah, I think that hit Powell in the head on the bench there. He's okay though, as you get to look at from the assistant coach, he's just fine. Right off the top of the helmet, that was Anton Kalina, another good shift, 27 points, 27 games coming into this contest for Kalina. Couple of big saves from Stiliadis in that sequence too. He's played really well tonight for the Wolves, and I sound like a broken record saying that. Friday night it was, uh, you know, Pominville, last night it was Constantino, tonight Stiliadis. All have played well for the Wolves in net. Another face-off win for the Thunder. Contrado throws one through the slot. Nobody home, though. And it comes to Bogsel. He can't get it by Dunford, though. Good back check there from McIntosh as the Thunder come back into the Watertown zone. Evan, cross to Contrado. Pucks in skates. Backhands one. McIntosh gets that one off the heel of the stick as he had an open net and just missed. Masters winds and fires. That shot goes wide. Joe Devney gets to the puck for Watertown. He'll play it through center and Bonsell just tips it into the water or to the Delaware zone as Watertown will go for a change. 14 minutes left in the third period. Dunford's clearing attempt goes off the wall and back to center where Natchez will play it. That's off the skate of Devney as he'll turn back into the Wolves zone and now he just backhands one into the Delaware zone a bit too far for Michael Desjardins and we get icing. Wow, I sure thought Desjardins beat Darren Devine there. Well, not sure about that one. Desjarlay well in front. Oh, and the line's insane. That's my bad. Yeah, but it can't be. It's just unacceptable. Right. <laughs> it was not even close. Well, that's why they're actually not going to make it an icing. They're just going to face off at center ice. You still take a scoring opportunity away from a team. Yeah. Off the draw, Boudreaux wins this one. It'll go all the way in onto Stiliadis, and then Calpuzos will play it. Gets it past Simonetta. Back to center. Charlie Penn will just bang one in from the red line. Stiliadis gets a quick whistle. That's a really quick whistle. They said because it's a delayed offside, but that's, it, you could still play it off a delayed offside right. here. Give Watertown a chance to break it out. Because now you're going to face it off. And unless they're going to, unless they blew the whistle on the hole, but that's just really fast. Here we got a look at Dan DeCristofaro. He's got 19 points. The leading point getter for defenseman on this Delaware Thunder team. Three goals, 16 assists to his name this season. Face-off win comes right back to him. Comes right on in front. Simonetta couldn't get to it as it's cleared to the corner. Municello will play it around behind. Trying to get to Simonetta, but instead Boudreaux picks it off. His pass to Desjardins. Touch pass to Lucas. Right back on the tape of Boudreaux. Boudreaux throws it into the slot and it bounces off the stick of Desjardins. Municello goes to the wall with him and now Simonetta back the other way. Two on three with Ryan Marker. Tries to work around Coachman. Puck comes loose. Marker will just bang one towards the net, but it's well wide. Municello knifes it right into the slot. It comes to Simonetta. Rolling puck goes wide. Marker and Coachman will go to the corner. Marker comes away with it. Ryan will back one hand, backhand one off the wall. 
to Cristoforo. Tries the wraparound, saves Stiliadis. And now Calputos will get to it in the corner as to Cristoforo has to retreat, but Penns keeps it in at the blue line. Good hops there from the captain. Keeps the pressure on. Calpuzos lifts the stick of marker to get to that puck. Now off the wall comes to Jamie Lucas. Lucas, the goal scorer, walks in. Backhand shot high and wide. That's going to come all the way, not back to center, as Boudreau keeps it in momentarily, but then Devine kicks it further. Sanstebo has to play it back to center. Vladimir Port winds and fires and a save to Massa Carlson, and that'll get up into the netting. 12-16 left in the third. Watertown leading 2-1. to one. Port's become a goal scorer this weekend. It's that simple. Vladimir Port got one tonight, has the game winner on Friday night, and Port's been phenomenal for this Watertown. I'd go to far as say probably the best player this weekend for the Wolves team. It's funny, he only had 44 shots on goal coming into the game. He, I, my guess would be he might have only had 30 coming into the weekend. He's been that good, and Kalinin takes a hit from Liam Little. I think we're gonna get a penalty on Watertown. Kieran Devine's gotta watch himself here because the Thunder, I think, are set to go to the power play. Now Pisano getting in it with Little. You don't want to even things up here. And you got to see how many minutes this is. That's not a good headshot at all. Second time Kalina's been hit up high. Well, I know he was on the way down. The yes. The signal was a trip. I think they're actually calling the trip, which sent Kalina down in the first place. I don't think they're calling the second hit that got Kalina high. I just saw Little mouth the words trip as he got to the penalty box. It's actually Sedanko who's yeah. up on the board. So they're not calling the play on Little there. They're, I think what they're saying is that Sedanko tripped Colleen and that's what led to the collision with Little. So either way, the Thunder are going to the power play with a chance to tie this game with 12-13 left in the third. Well, that's surprising what it was, but two minutes, nevertheless, the Delaware Thunder will be happy with it. Devin on the draw, won it initially, goes off the skate of Anton Colleen and Marker plays it around. Pisano will get to it in the corner. His pass, though, goes right off the toe of his stick to Desjarlais, who clears it all the way down on Damasa Carlson. He'll hand it off to Pence. 145 left on the man advantage. Well, today, Delaware's been much better with their entry, their zone entries. Let's see if they could keep it up on this power play. Here's Kalinin. Kalinin tries to walk through two defensemen, holds on to the puck, gets it back to Marker at the point. Ryan holds, turns. Now he'll give it to Kalinin again off the wall. Pens and Marker switch spots. Anton Kalinin walks into the high slot, plays it down low for Pisano. Pens, cross ice for Marker, handcuffed him for a moment, but he holds the puck behind the net now. And then he tried to get it to Demet, but sort of fanned on the pass, and I think the net came off its pegs. So we'll get a face off to the right of Stiliadis, which works to the advantage of Delaware. Well, one of the reasons all these whistles have been is because that net's come off. We talk about the choppy gameplay today, and the net coming off has a ton to do with that tonight. Certainly does. It's gotten better since the first period, but rears its ugly head again there. Demon and Boudreaux on the draw. Evgeny wins another. Kalinin nearly went out of the zone. Did a great job to keep it in, but Penns had to retreat. So the point was empty, and here comes Watertown. Jamie Lucas, oh, but offside, Boudreaux. Lucas kind of slowed up just a little bit at the blue line, and that got Boudreaux in just a half step early. Yeah, and you see Lucas tap himself. He says, that's my bad, as once again, there's two things you can't do at the blue line, east-west and stop. You can't stop right at the blue line. 103 left on the power play. Brennan Young now at the center position with Lunicello, Simonetta, to Cristofaro and Contrado. Simonetta carries through the neutral zone. He'll pull up at the circle. Tried to find Brennan Young. That's good stick play by Derek Boudreau. Now the race is on. Jamie Lucas is going to get there first. Walks in front. Nice poke check by DeCristoforo, but it comes right back to Lucas. Shot saved by Simon, or Demasa Carlson. But again, the net comes off its moorings, and we get another whistle. That's a huge save, and I don't know what Contrado is doing. He sent it right back to the front of his own net. Not sure if he thought DeCristoforo was there. You still want that puck going out the other way as quick as possible. Down to 43 seconds on the power play, and you know, on these last two man advantages, including the shorthanded goal, Watertown's had the better chances as opposed to the Thunder, who were up a man. Now they dropped the puck before Municello even got off the ice. Brennan Young gets thrown down by Liam Little. Ryan Marker comes away with the puck, though. 30 seconds left. Ryan Marker with speed. Fires from a tough angle. That's off the blocker of Stiliadis. But then an easy clear for Liam Little. 
It's gonna go all the way down on Demasa Carlson. That's why I don't like that play from Ryan Marker because it's not a dangerous shot. It's a power play, you're up a man. I'd rather see the team set up and not have to go 200 feet again. Down to 15 seconds. De Cristofaro gets in the zone but then loses his edge and the puck. Brandon Contrato nearly kept it in at the blue line. Held it up enough to give Ryan Marker a chance to get to it but that'll just about do it for the power play. Natras is out of the box. Marker's into the offensive zone. Spins around Liam Little, shoots one in front. Stiliadis made the save and then covers up. 10.06 to play, it's 2-1 Watertown as the Wolves kill off another penalty. Stiliadis has been good in this third period. He's seen some shots this period and some high quality ones as well. You had the good shot from Kalinin on the power play and you have Marker with a couple prime scoring chances. And you kind of call Marker scoring chances from anywhere on the ice with his shot. Absolutely, on the draw here will be McIntosh and Kyle Powell. Powell wins it, but back to the point, it's Kieran Devine. He'll throw it in front, bouncing puck goes just wide after the deflection by Eric Masters. Loose in the corner, Masters cutting, Sanstebo and Devney fight for it. Comes loose to cutting, Taylor throws it into the slot, finds Devine at the point. Kieran will just play it into the corner, but Kyle Powell gets there, and then he gives it away to Kieran. Taylor cutting now, in the corner, throws it in front, McIntosh with a shot, what an amazing kick save by Stiliadis, and then down behind the net, Goes Bogsell and McIntosh, and we're gonna get a whistle. Cross check. Not sure if this is on Evan or Bogsell, we'll see. Gotta be Bogsell, right? That Must hit was be. dangerous it's from gonna, behind. And they had the puck, so that, that's why they stopped the play. So, Thunder going back to the power play. Charlie Penns with some words for Bogsell as well, as he goes to the box. 9.37 to go, we'll see if the Thunder can cash in. 0 for two on the power play here in the third period. And if they gave up the shorthanded goal that gave Watertown the lead as well. If you're Bogsell, I'm not sure what the uh, smart play in that is there. I mean, that's from behind late. Shot was already taken. Easy clear for Watertown after the initial faceoff win, and the Thunder will reset here. 140 left on the power play of Genny Demon on the tape. Walks to the circle, now stops, trying to set things up. Pens at the point. He'll fire one. High shot. That handcuff Stiliadis. But the puck comes loose to center, and now here comes Boudreaux the other way for Watertown. His pass knocked down by Demon. Evgeny chases behind the net. Tried to leave it for Pens, but Charlie overskates. Now Ryan Marker picks it up. 120 to go on the power play. Ryan Marker skates around Desjardins, and right into the zone. Quick shot and a glove save. Still Yadis. He seems to be getting more confident even as the game rolls along here. Yeah, he's starting to see the shots well. He's playing just a phenomenal all-around game, Stiliadis, and his rebound control as well has been very, very good. Man, that save on McIntosh was a primo Sports Center top 10 type highlight. Ryan Marker keeps it in at the blue line. He'll fire it around behind the net. Evgeny Demon looks to get there, and he does, as the Thunder try to set up the power play. Backhands it to Pisano. That's in the skates of Kalinin, though. Comes loose in the slot. Banged away by Sanstebo all the way down. Under a minute to go on the power play now. Pens will carry it behind the net. 45 seconds to go. 8.20 in the third. Watertown leading 2-1. to one. Again, Ryan Marker gets it into the zone. Drops it for Demon. On the tape of Kalinin. He throws one in front. Pisano whiffs on the second chance. Gets another shot off on Stiliadis. Big juicy rebound. And Demon overskated. And now Boudreaux comes back the other way on a break. He'll walk in front, backhands a shot, save to Massa Carlson. But Boudreaux's got the puck back. Throws another one in front and he scores. Derek Boudreaux makes it three to one. And Pisano's saying the net's off before the goal. Demassa Carlson saying the same thing. There's no way that net was even close to on. The puck was in the net because of how far the net was off the moorings. There's no way that goal can count. There is absolutely no way that goal can count. But I think that's what Brandon Contrato is saying to the referees at this point. But I don't get any impression by watching this conversation that that goal's coming off the board. There's no way that can count. You can't score with the net like that. Well, <laughs> Demasa Carlson doing some renovating. His own demonstration. <laughs> of the net being off. He's taken the net off the pegs and the pegs out of the ice. How can that count? The net was nowhere near on the moorings. Well, I guess 
the referees are gonna, either going to say that they didn't notice the net was off or that the goal would have been a goal if the net had been on its moorings. There's no way you could say that because the net moved. The Massa Carlson doesn't know where the net is. But Boudreaux on a shorthanded goal makes it a 3-1 Watertown advantage. That's Boudreaux's 20th goal of the season. Although, maybe we are getting a little more, well, at least head coach Charlie Penns is getting some kind of an explanation. I'm just curious to know how that counts. If the net's off the moorings, the rule is you can't score like that. It is going to stand, though, as the faceoff will come to center ice. 7.58 left. Two shorthanded goals for Watertown here in the third have given them a 3-1 to one lead. And now Brandon Gattrato looking to the bench to see who the other two players are going to be as we'll continue here. Taylor Cutting and McIntosh join Contrato and Brennan Young with DeCristofaro on the power play. 21 seconds left on the man advantage. Evan McIntosh wins the faceoff. And DeCristofaro hands it to Taylor Cutting. Taylor. It's a shorthanded goal, Gary, by the way. Right, battling with Liam Little. Desjardins now Cutting gives Little a bit of a shove. As Calpuzos will just skate around the neutral zone trying to kill what's left of the penalty, and he does. Back to even strength, 7.35 to go. Watertown up by two. Pass for Calpuzos, jumps over his stick. McIntosh, Contrado with a shot, and that's stopped by Stiliadis, and he'll cover up for another faceoff. 7.27 to go. This should be the media timeout now, I believe, correct? I would think. We haven't had it yet, and I think that's what the referee's asking the other ref. If we had it yet, we haven't, so that will bring us to the media timeout. 7.27 to go. So you give up the two shorties. What are they saying on the bench right here? I don't even know what you're saying. Frustration. you got to find a way if your coach, Lou Santini and Charlie Pence, to keep the frustration down because it's got to be at an all-time high. You lost the first two, and now you're trailing because of a goaltender interference, possibly. We need to get a better look at that. And the net being off the moorings. There's two goals that are up in the air tonight again. You've had good chances, though. I mean, they generated some good scoring chances. And I think you almost have to move forward in that respect. Keep the pressure on to maybe try to force overtime. Yeah, that's something that needs to be done and needs to be done ASAP. You got to get going. You got to let the legs move in. And Delaware needs to find a way to get the next goal. So out of the media timeout, the faceoff will come to the right of Michael Stiliadis, making his second start for Watertown. Gave up five in his first outing in a loss. He's only given up one here tonight. And again, he really hasn't given up a goal off the stick of a Delaware Thunder player as that goal in the first period actually went off the Watertown defenseman Calpuzos. Comes loose in front, Marker with a shot, blocker save by Stiliadis, and the rebound comes around in the corner. Joe Devney will get there for Watertown. He'll just play it through center. Damasa Carlson will play it back to the neutral zone. Marker retreats. He'll look to speed into the Watertown zone. Gets around Devney, just backhands one on Stiliadis, and he'll cover up again for another faceoff. Stiliadis, that's how you know you're playing well. A point blank shot from Marker right at the hash mark, and you knock it down with the blocker. That's a big save by Stiliadis. This could be a 3-2 game. 7.03 to go, 3-1 Watertown. The Thunder will be on to Danville next weekend. Two road games. Remember, you can hear Mike's call at DelawareThunder.com. And then we'll be back here two weeks from now against the Danbury Hattricks. Derek Boudreaux racing Daniel DeCristofaro to the puck. Punches it behind the net. Jamie Lucas comes up with it, spins away from Kalinin. Holds the puck, though. Battling with DeCristofaro, Lucas comes away with it. He'll turn into the circle. His shot's deflected by Daniel DeCristofaro and out of play. Lucas falling to the ice on that shot attempt. Well, we talked about what are the officials going to do if the puck, if the net keeps coming off and off? Well, they just said we'll count it as a goal, I guess. Right. Evgeny Demon and Boudreaux on the draw here. Off the draw, Boudreaux with a win. Sanstebo will get there and just play it deeper into the zone for Watertown. In the corner. Lucas tries to get there, poked by Demon, but not out. Sanstebo keeps it in, but now Brennan Young comes away with the puck. His pass is on the tape of Anton Kalinin. Kalinin, though, good back check by Sanstebo and loses it there, but now it comes free and Demon gets it. Demon behind for Kalinin, that pass intercepted by Jamie Lucas. Lucas will play it ahead to Desjardins. 
Desjardins looking for Boudreau in the slot. He goes down because he got tied up with Pens and a score! Puck came right back to Desjardins. I don't think Damasa Carlson knew where the puck was. And Desjardins fires a shot from the circle, beats Damasa Carlson over the shoulder, and it's now 4-1 to one Watertown. Damasa Carlson was down and out a little early there. And once again, the net's off here, but this one, I say, is a good goal as he knocked it off after the puck was in the back of the net, 4-1. Now all of a sudden, a three-goal game. Desjardins, who had a pair of goals last night, adds his 10th of the season there. And a third period that seemed to have so much promise at the start. The tide has certainly turned and some of the Thunder faithful starting to head for the exits here with 6.04 to go. Devine plays it in from the red line but on the wrong side of the red line so we'll get an icing. And that's gonna come all the way back in front of Damasa Carlson. Well, yeah, we want to remind you, we do hit the road next weekend. That'll be an early trip. They'll have to leave Thursday, these Delaware Thunder, to get out to Danville with the long trip ahead. That and Columbus, two trips that on a bus, woof, that's a long time, Gary. I feel for you, my friend. <laughs> Off the draw, Pisano plays to center, bounces over the stick of Simonetta. Boxel chips it ahead to Devney. Devney into the Delaware zone. Works around Kieran Devine. Finally gets him off the puck, and Ryan Marker will come back the other way. Marker's pass behind Municello. Does a good job to get his stick on it, though. Throws it back into the slot. Now it's loose in front. Powell whacks away at it. Now Devney comes back the other way for Watertown. Pass for Boggsel was deflected by Pisano, but Boggsel gets it back. Walks right into the slot. Powell throws one in front, and they score! Devney with the deflection, and it's now 5-1 Watertown. And once again, that net is off, but that one also gonna count slid under the pad. That's just beautiful passing by the Watertown Wolves. And they lead it now five to one. Nice play there by Boxel. Kyle Powell in on it as well. And Devney, and uh, you know, we mentioned this with about eight minutes left in the second period that it looked like Watertown was starting to find their stride. And at this point, I mean, they've just outskated the Thunder here in the third period. You saw it on the two shorthanded goals. And those last two opportunities, it's just, you know, you're creating odd man chances. Contrado with a shot that misses. Stiliadis takes a shot at Dunford. McIntosh battles for the puck along the wall. Contrado now throws one. Side angle shot was right under the pad of Stiliadis, and he's able to jump on top before it crosses the goal line. Correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, but this is the first time seeing Sedanko and Bormanis out this period. I think you're right. You know, they don't play on the specialty teams. They had the one power play early for Watertown and then the two shorthanded, or three shorthanded chances. Little off the draw, Sanstebo plays it in the corner. Masters wipes out. And Sanstebo plays it ahead to Bormanis. Bormanis pulls up, just throws it into the corner, and eludes the hit from Dunford. He came from behind the net, and now, did the net come off again? Yes. Sedanko tried to push it back on with his stick, but they blew it dead. Faceoff's gonna come out of the zone, though. McIntosh, Contrado, and Masters out. It's Boudreau, Lucas, Desjardins for Watertown. McIntosh wins the draw. Dunford across for Litke. Dunford spins away in the corner. They'll get it to Eric Masters. Masters will just play it into the zone. Port knocks it down at the blue line. Now Jamie Lucas battling with Masters behind the net. They continue to fight for it. Eric overskates. And Vladimir Port comes back the other way. Boudreaux, he'll just wind and fire one right off the linesman. That's gonna smart. Because you know those guys aren't padded up as much as the players are. Mm -mm. Yikes. Contrado winds and fires another glove save from Stiliatis. Boudreau quickly went over and apologized right away. Bogsel over there as well. They're all checking on him. Unintentional. <laughs> the big fella knows it's all right. You know, it's it's, it's a tough. You know, as we sit here, 4.06 left. The Thunder down by four. He came into this weekend with such optimism. You know, Watertown pulled off the big trade with Urich. They had lost three in a row. He kind of felt like this might have been a momentum-changing weekend for Delaware. And it just hasn't gone their way. You know, you lose the heartbreaker on Friday night by one. Penalties do you in last night. And the power play kills you tonight. 
and you sit here down five to one. You're just kind of left with a little bit of a bitter taste in your mouth. As, and uh, obviously the players have to feel the same way. That's exactly right, Gary. I mean, it's frustration since Friday night with the goal from Port, and ever since then it's just been downhill for Delaware. Devin with a shot that gets blocked by Natris, and now Devney comes back the other way. Walks around to Cristofaro, throws one in on Damasa Carlson. He'll keep it going. His pens will bang it around the boards, but Sedenko knocks it down. Sedenko's pass intercepted by Kalinin. Anton works into the Watertown zone. He'll look to carry it behind. Now he pulls up. Pens at the point. He'll wind and fire. Saves to Liotis. It's sitting in front. Demon with a shot, and it goes wide. Kalinin now. He'll carry it around behind. Looks to reverse around Port. Changes directions again. Vladimir plays him off the puck. Now Liam Little looks to clear Sedenko. At least gets it back to center. We're under three minutes to play. And now Watertown just looking to get the red line and get it deep. Brennan Young holds, held too long, and was able to be checked by Calpuzos. And now Sedenko. He'll get it back to center. He's harassed by Kieran Devine. They both go down before Manis has the puck. He'll hold along the far wall. Hestered by Simonetta. Mark kicks it ahead to his stick. Tried to get through Calpuzos. Instead, Municello picks it up. Thomas works around behind the net. Comes away with the puck. Now he'll reverse again. Calpuzos is waiting for him. But Municello continues to control the puck. Natras takes a swat at it, but misses. Comes to Pisano at the point. His shot well wide. Goes into the corner. Sedenko and Minicello bump there. Puck still loose. In the skates of Simonetta, now Calpuzos finally gets it to Boudreaux. We're under two minutes to play as Derek carries back for Watertown. Lucas in the circle. His shot. I don't know if that caught the back of Boudreaux, but either way, it deflects into the netting for a stoppage of play. Looks like it got the stick of Kieran Devine and directed straight up and out of play. Delaware down 5-1 to one in this contest. Once again, a close game going into period number three. And unfortunately for Delaware, just unable to find a way to close it out. McIntosh, Taylor cutting and Contrato around for Delaware. Boudreaux wins the draw. Port's just gonna dump it in deep. Takes a bump from cutting. They clear to center. Puck hops past Contrato. And now Dunford plays it across for Lickie. Lickie for cutting, Contrato grabs a hold of it. Tries to get around Vladimir Port. Port will ride him to the wall in the corner. But gets it to McIntosh. McIntosh to Litke. Bryce fires. Handcuffs Stiliadis a bit. He's able to knock it down, though. And now Boudreaux comes back the other way with Lucas. Desjardins to Lucas, who threw one in front. Looking for Boudreaux, but it went all the way to the near wall. Desjardins, poke check there. Now Contrato picks it up. Backhands it ahead for cutting, and now we get a whistle. As the net's off, it's more. About 85 feet behind the play. No reason for that whistle, a minute three to go. I just don't understand. Even the line's been coming over talking to the official. I almost feel like they're just kind of punishing Damasa Carlson at this point for all the nets coming off. So maybe they've told him like, hey, if it comes off, we're just gonna blow it on you. Seems to be the case. I'm being a bit facetious with that. <laughs> minute three to go, 5-1 Watertown. They're gonna finish off the weekend sweep of the Thunder here. And for the Wolves, again, we're talking about a team that a lot of people around the FHL were looking at is, what are you doing? You traded the league's leading scorer, didn't get much in return for him. You're chasing the enforcers, yada, yada, yada. And they come in, sweep three from the Thunder, and they're gonna move ahead of Elmira in the standings into second place in the Eastern Division after the win today. Right, this was a divisional matchup, three game series. This was huge. Delaware was looking, coming into the matchup, hoping to take two. Unfortunately, they don't take any this weekend against the Wolves. Under 35 seconds to play. McIntosh's attempt to get it deep is blocked by Sedenko. Delayed offside. 25 seconds left. Marvin Powell has it for Watertown. Plays it ahead for Sedenko. And as you mentioned all weekend, he and Bormanis in this line with Liam Little have been really good. Bormanis winds and fires a shot to Massa Carlson. Makes the glove save, and we'll get another faceoff with 14.3 ticks left. Yeah, this face-off just because it has to be done here with just 14.3 seconds to go. Delaware drops a game they could have had, and 
You know, Delaware needs to start racking up some points, obviously, because last time we checked, Menor was up on Carolina, so that's a tough, tough weekend for Menor, and they're able to steal one. And if they are able to steal one in Carolina, that's huge. That's an excellent point. Oh, that game's now tied. 3-3 as the Thunderbirds have come back to tie it. Now Pisano takes a run at Liam Little behind the net. That's probably going to send him to the box. Anthony's been trying to get somebody to go since last night. Right. And they're going to send him right to the locker room. He was hoping to find a dance partner, and now the refs are saying, uh-uh. They don't want any needless shenanigans here with just 9.4 seconds left. So they'll send Pisano off for the roughing. In that third period, Carolina got goals from Joe Zaka, who had a hat trick last night, Daniel Martin, two power play goals, just a minute 40 apart, which have tied that game at three. I think they're actually getting ready to go to overtime. Now they're waiting for Pisano to get to the All locker the room. To the locker room, yeah. Charlie Penn's having a conversation with Marvin Powell. You know, it's interesting, as much jawing and at times close to altercations that we've had all weekend, we really only had the one fight between Natris right. and Taylor Cutting last night, which really never even got going too much. Taylor never even got his glove off. Now Cutting and Natris, they're We're gonna have one a here. Bit. We're gonna have one here. Yeah, Taylor's already trying to get that glove off. He and Atris are gonna go. They went last night, they're gonna go again. This time, Taylor had a little more time to get prepared. Righty on righty. This is kind of an old school dance here. Finally, Natris moves in, uppercut shot on Taylor. Trying to get in tight. Getting another shot in. Cutter can't get that right hand free. Now he does. Misses with one, misses with another, but Natris goes down. I don't think Cutter actually caught him with either one of those blows. Nope. I don't think anyone connected once again. <laughs> I, I think, and I think Taylor caught the ice with his fist as he came through with that second shot. So give the fans a little something to cheer about. Natchez will go to the locker room as will Cutting. We'll get another face off. The last 9.4 seconds will tick off here. And it looks like the yard sale on the ice. Nobody knows whose stick is who, <laughs> but it's figured out now. Yep. So again, it's a really fruitful weekend for the Watertown Wolves. As I mentioned, they're gonna move into second place in the East, two points and percentage points ahead of Elmira, trying to chase down the Danbury hat tricks. Off the draw, Masters chops that back to the neutral zone. That should just about do it. Three seconds, two, one, and that'll bring this game to an end. Two shorthanded goals and then two more for good measure as Watertown puts four on the board here in the third period to take the third and final game of this weekend sweep by a final score of five to one. As the Thunder obviously are gonna be frustrated because think about it, a one-one game, you're going to the power play, chance to, you feel like, a power play that actually it's gotten better over the weekend, and all of a sudden, just six seconds in, an unmanned point, Charlie Penn stumbles, and it turns into a breakaway for Jamie Lucas, and the game was never the same after that. Right, unfortunately for Delaware, the shorthanded goal was the difference here tonight. A lot of frustration on the ice for the Delaware Thunder, and rightfully so, and Demasa Carlson looks like he's still upset about that call, which I don't blame him for. The net was off, and that was the game right there. That third goal was the complete and total difference. The Thunder outshot Watertown in the third period, 21-13. For me, first star of the night, it's got to be Michael Stiliatis. He makes 44 saves, and again, the only goal was one that went in off his own defenseman. He was really, really good for Watertown tonight. Yeah, he was really phenomenal tonight. The, th the three stars of the game, I mean, you got to look at number one, Stiliatis. It's got to be. Yep. He was absolutely phenomenal once again. Jamie Lucas had a goal and a pair of assists. Vladimir Port with a goal and an assist. Devney had a goal, Kyle Powell with a pair of helpers, Desjarlais scored his 10th of the year. So, Watertown finishes off the weekend sweep. Final score, five to one. Meet and greet with the players is about to transpire here at the Thunderdome. Of course, don't forget,
Mikey Bastille will have all the action for you next Saturday or next Friday. My apologies. When the Thunder hit the road to take on the Danville Dashers. We'll be back here at the Center Ice Arena in Harrington two weeks from or two weeks from Friday, February 7th and 8th, when the Danbury Hat Tricks are back in town. So a full weekend of hockey. It's been a lot of fun bringing it to you. On behalf of Mike Bastille and the rest of the crew, Sue Lamb, who is working the cameras and does all the technical work for us here with the Delaware Thunder. We appreciate you tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this weekend of hockey. Have a great work week and join us again Friday night at DelawareThunder.com. Final score once again from Thunderdome, Watertown 5, the Thunder 1. I'm Gary Schofield. Thanks for watching here on YouTube. And remember, you can always follow the Thunder at DelawareThunder.com.